Welcome, everybody, to Friday Night Football, live on game day on the day.com. We are coming live from the campus of East Lime High School, where the Vikings will play host to their rivals from the other side of the bridge, the Fitch Falcons. Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. We've got the stat guru in the booth. The junior voice of game day is patrolling behind us. Down on the field somewhere, Mike DeMauro is getting the important facts. And, of course, the game day crew led by Peter Wappy, ready to bring you all of this live tonight, as well as that gorgeous video package you'll see on Tuesday morning. Keith, a couple of 0-1 teams, but should be a very competitive game. Casey, nice to have Nice to be here tonight. Beautiful night for football and the... Uh you know, beautiful stadium here at Eastline High School. Casey, Fitch comes in having lost 13 straight games, and it's a program that's plain and simply forgotten how to win. They got down themselves a little bit last week against Plainfield, 13-6, to and they never could recover from that. They got a new coaching staff with Mike Ellis, uh, and they try and encourage competition, and that's the biggest thing they want to instill this program early. Uh, you know, keep in mind that this is a program back from 1999 to 2001, won 34 straight games and was probably one of the most feared teams across the state. As for the Vikings, uh, they just couldn't catch a break last week versus in London. They played very well, moved the ball up and down the field, but seemed to shoot themselves in the foot a little bit. You know, penalties, offsides, a couple turnovers, and they just kind of battled uphill all game long. Coach Rudy Bagos has had a good week of practice. Uh, the team is fired up and ready to go. And a win here for either one of these teams could boost confidence and help them move forward through the rest of the season in the ECC, Casey. Uh, we're looking forward to an exciting game tonight here on Friday Night Football. You're listening to Game Day on theday.com. Now, Game Day is brought to you by the MJ Sullivan Automotive Corner, the Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut. Your first quarter will be brought to you by M.J. Sullivan Automotive Corner. Now, for those of you out there, the M.J. Sullivan Hyundai, you know there's no money down, and that means no money down. You can lease a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport for no money down and only $279 a month for 36 months. They'll pay your first payment. They'll pay your upfront sales tax. They'll pay your registration and dealer conveyance fees. You pay zero down and only $279 a month for a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport. Only at M.J. Sullivan Hyundai, corner of Broad and Coleman Streets, New London, and see the entire inventory at MJSullivanAuto.com. And the Vikings take the field in front of the home crowd. Good crowd here, here at East Lime High School. And I tell you right now, Casey, the Vikings look big. Bigger than I expected in person down on the field before the game. Yeah, both teams have size that's uh, a little bit unexpected, but East Lime, you're much bigger than we uh, than we expected, and that's not surprising. They're... Uh, their, uh, their game plan tonight is going to be to be physical on both sides of the ball. Uh, there's nothing fancy about how East Lime uh, does things offensively or defensively. So, uh, whereas you expect a little bit more uh, deception and trickery from the Falcons, you're going to be expecting some very, uh, you know, clear-cut, direct offense and defense from East Lime. East Lime will run the ball out of the out of the eye and the power eye for most of the night. That'd be their their typical offensive set. They will have a base five-two defense. Um, they're an assignment-based defense, but they were trying to bring some pressure against the Falcons to try and disrupt some of the misdirection stuff that Fitch has got going on in the backfield. And that's a signature of Fitch football, uh, misdirection and running the ball. Captains are at the center of the field right now for Fitch. That's Johnny Johnston and Luke Letelier and Robert Duncan and Dante Paul. For the Vikings, coach captains are number five, Lorez Simpkins. Number 7, Travis Franco. Number 16, Brett Bragaw. And number 57, Andrew Brown. They are at the center of the field right now. They're going to do the ceremonial handshake and coin toss. And we are just minutes away from kickoff here at East Lime High School. Your Fitch Falcons in the all-white with the red and black letters and the black helmets. And, of course, the Vikings in their signature home maroon and white. Beautiful night here at East Lime High School. The sun is starting to go down. It's about 6.35 or so, and, you know, it just makes for a real, real nice setting here, Casey. You get the trees, and, you know, and, the, and this is what high school football is all about. I mean, these Friday nights in southeastern Connecticut, and just what a pleasure to be part of them, and at a different stadium for us week in and week out. For those of you new to the day.com and new to the southeastern Connecticut uh, broadcasts of the day, last week we opened up at Ledger High School, where Ledger shut out Cranston East from Rhode Island, 21 to nothing. You're listening to us live tonight, audio only, so it sounds like an old school radio broadcast. But Tuesday morning, you got to tune in onto the day.com and look at the genius that is Peter Wappy and what he does with the highlight package. Uh, accumulated from tonight's footage of video as well as the audio of the coaches and Keith and I, and you will see an absolute brilliant 
uh, NFL Films quality video package. Hey, you know East Line fight, football is making a comeback too, Casey, when you see tailgating going on in the South End end zone in here. Great atmosphere tonight at East Lime High School. Well, you know, tailgating means one of two things, that they're either really invested or they're looking for an excuse to cook pick. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now take a moment uh, to listen to our national anthem and honor our country, the East Lime Marching Band. The East Lime Marching Band with the National Anthem. Casey, the work week is over. It's Friday night. It's the game day on day.com. Are you ready for some football, my friend? I'm always excited on a Friday night, and I am, uh, I'm looking forward to the crisp fall evenings that we'll be getting as we move forward into the fall. Of course, game day will be taking you every Friday night all the way through the Thanksgiving Day football festivities here in the ECC and around southeastern Connecticut. So every Friday night, 6.30 is the general kickoff time. Tune in right here to theday.com, and you can listen to an exciting high school football game. Tonight, of course, we are here at East Lime High School, where the 0-1 Fitch Falcons, who lost a tough game in, a, in what is a rebuilding program under new coach Mike Ellis, a tough game at Plainfield High School, taking on the home host East Lime Vikings. Led by, of course, Rudy Vegas. They are also 0-1, but they ran into a bit of a buzzsaw last week. The New London High School Whalers, uh, who have a, an experienced uh, team on offense and defense. And uh, East Lime did well, but just couldn't quite pull off uh, the upset against the Whalers. I think a fast start for either one of these teams could produce uh, dividends moving forward in this game tonight, Casey. Could, you know, fast start, good positive plays, boost the confidence on both, both sides of the field here. East Lime going left to right. Brett Braga will do the kickoff. Back deep is Johnson for the Falcons. Bragal waiting for the official to give it. There's your whistle. And we are ready to get underway. Bragal approaches the ball. Nice end over end kick coming down to the short man of Fitch. That is Tyrick Scott. He takes it around the right end and is gobbled up immediately by a boatload of Vikings and the Falcons will set up shop first and 10 from their own 22-yard line, led, of course, by quarterback Robert Duncan. Duncan possesses the athleticism skill set as a quarterback. He likes the ball on the edge. He's a playmaker. He's a very, very exciting young kid to watch. Fitch will be led up front by the big guys, Aiden Green, Kevin Berardi, Ryan Kohler, Chris Hodgkinson, and Kyle Nidry. Those are the big guys. Duncan will take the, take the snaps. We're going to start with... Parker Gibson in the backfield. Handoff goes straight up the middle to Gibson. And he gets about five yards, or five tough yards, straight into the heart of the East Lime line. Vikings with good size on their front four. They're going to look to, of course, Keith, stop big plays, which the Falcons are capable of with a lot of speed to the outside. And you're going to see a lot of the softening up the middle of the field early going here by Fitch to try and loosen up those big plays on the outside. Isaiah Sebastian splits wide. Luke Letelier on the other side for Fitch. Duncan rolls out to his left, throws into the flat, and it is complete to Cleon McClish. Nice play that time. First first down of the game 
And nice job that time by Duncan throwing on and not an obvious throwing down. Well, there's athleticism we talked about with Duncan. You get him on the rollout, he's moving from right to left. He throws across his body. Easy pitch and catch, Casey, of about 10 yards. Nothing fancy, but yet efficient on second down. 11 minutes and 11 seconds remaining here. We're just underway at East Lime High School. No score. Fitch with the ball. First and 10 at its own 39. Letelier goes out to the right. Trent Evans to the left. Handoff goes straight up the middle again to Parker Gibson, and he's got a big hole. And Gibson all the way up right to the first down marker where he is brought down by Dalton Franco. But that's going to be another first down for the Fitch Falcons and a good start offensively. A gracious spot and a good start offensively there by Fitch. And again, the recipe is pound up the middle early, two out of the first three plays, right up the gut. Gracious is a good word. Now That was very gracious. I'm looking at it. I'm like, that falls across midfield. Lorenz Simpkins, one of the captains of the East Lime Vikings, has so far been pushed off the ball these two plays. That's where they're running the ball. Duncan sends McClish. Pitch goes to McClish. McClish to the right side, trying to get outside. Cuts it off tackle. Has a seam. There's a flag. It's going to be a foot race. And, oh, unfortunately, I think a nice gain by Cleon McClish is going to get brought down by a hold out on the edge. That is typical of offensive holding. We'll see what our officials say. But Cleon McClish took that pitch, hit the sideline, showed his jets, Keith. Fitch, yeah, Fitch is showing some flashes there early of basically everything they got in that play, but a couple of dives up the middle. Good for positive yardage, or a rollout by Duncan. Positive yardage, and a sweep, basically a toss sweep to the left there. Positive yardage can be negated by a holding penalty against Fitch. Yeah, we'll back them up a little bit, but a, a positive start, Casey. And those are some of the things I think when you have a program that's searching for a win, searching for something to build upon, this is a very, very good start for the Falcons. Well, it is, but I'm, I'm going to caution you because one of the things that we saw in the scrimmage with Monfield, and Coach Mike Ellis talked about it at length when we spoke to him the other day, is that this team, uh, and this is what happens when you've lost 13 in a row, this team is searching for some consistency in an identity. They showed these same flashes in the scrimmage. They showed these same flashes last week against Plainfield, but then a holding penalty, an incomplete, a fumble. These kinds of things are what set you back. First and 20, McClish in motion. Instead, they hand off straight up to Parker Stevens. He cuts to the outside. He's going to have a first down all the way down to the 30-yard line, and inside the 30 goes Parker Gibson. Parker Gibson showing great running here in the early going. Okay, uh, Casey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Give it to the big man up front. Let him take it off tackle. He got on the center. He piggybacked the center. Made a nice cut to the right side. Off tackle. Big gain on the play. Three, three carries for 36 yards in the early going for Parker Gibson. And three first downs for Fitch, which is something that they have struggled to do, which is just move the chains and get themselves into scoring position. Duncan. Quick toss, but he overthrows Cam Albin. That was just supposed to be a quick screen to Albin, and Duncan is a little too quick, overthrew. I like Duncan on the move out of the uh, on the quarterback position. I like him on the edge. Uh, he seems to be a little more comfortable when he's moving his feet, Casey. I like Duncan in the morning with a little cream and sugar and a donut. <laughs> How about oh, pizza in the booth? What do you think about that? No calories in pizza in booth pizza. That's all. <laughs> that, that's all there is to it. Second down and ten. Falcons. Ten minutes remaining here in the first period. No score. The Falcons are moving right to left. Gibson is your fullback. In motion, Johnson. Gibson gets it up the middle, but nice job that time. Sealed up very quickly by Patrick Dowling, the linebacker for East Lime. He sealed it up really quickly, and they're going to lose a little bit of yardage that time, bringing up third and long, which is what Fitch wanted to avoid. Uh, two inside linebackers for East Line pinched the middle of the field that time, uh, negating any kind of a big run or running lane by the uh, Fitch fullback. And this is what Coach Ellis was talking about. Now you're third and ten. Now you know you're an obvious passing down, so the, the Vikings are going to play pass here. And this is not the kind of downs that you want to have Duncan throwing the football. Down in distance would dictate, dictate tempo. Duncan, straight drop, throws low, but caught by Letelier right at the first down marker, and I think, yes, he is. That's going to be a first down. Falcons, Luke Letelier that time on a nice throw by Duncan, threw it where only Letelier could catch it, and he slid to the turf and made the catch. Duncan on the move, Letelier on a quick little slant, good for about 12 yards, and again, the point there is the ball was down and into Letelier's body where no defender could make a play on it. Good early start here for the Falcons. Down to nine minutes here remaining in the first period. Fitch with the ball first and ten at the East Line, 18-yard line. Trent Evans left, Letelier right in motion. Johnson, we've got some movement on the line. East Line definitely jumped. We're going to see if they were drawn off sides or if it was 
in fact, an encroachment penalty against East Line. The officials are converging right now, and they're going to say uh, dead ball foul offsides against East Lime. So the East Lime Vikings jump. That'll be a five-yard first and five for the Falcons. Casey, a good mixture of run-pass play calling early here. He's got East Lime back on the heels a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. First and five. This will be a great down for Duncan to throw the ball. Look for some play action and for Letelier in the corner right now. Duncan under center. Instead, he hands the ball off to Parker Gibson and nothing there. Gibson is stuffed coming out of the pile. Number 59, Hayden Swanson. Nice tackle that time by Swanson and the center of the foul of the East Lime Viking defense. And then right back to where they started from now, it's going to be second and seven. No surprise there for the East Lime defense. Linebackers did a nice job stuffing the middle of the field, taking away any kind of running lane for the fullback. Second and seven from the 14-yard line. No score here in the first period. Eight minutes remaining. Fitch sends Letelier out left. He's going to be guarded one-on-one -on -one by Alaith Gabay. Parker, uh, Duncan on the option to Johnson. Johnson has one guy to beat. Breaks a tackle. Heads for the end zone. Touchdown. Fitch Falcons. Good Johnny Johnston with the six-pointer for the Falcons. Good decision by Duncan not to hand the ball up to Parker up front. Quick pitch to the outside. Great, great downfield blocking by a couple wide receivers. And Fitch cashes in early. Great blocking by Letta Lear on the wide from the wide receiver position, sealed off the edge. Johnson showed the toughness in the breaking of a tackle and got himself the touchdown. In for the kick is Colton St. Louis, or Colton St. Louis, depending on if you have French ancestry. There goes that swinging moo gate. Swinging gate pole cat. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is good. Of course, St. Louis, the St. Louis family. Uh, a family of kickers here in southeastern Connecticut from St. Bernard's and here at Fitch. So with 7.54 remaining in the first period, our first points of the game, Falcons 7, Vikings 0. And i got to tell you, what a great scoreboard here at East Lime High School because they can program in the actual team name. So we are actually seeing on the scoreboard the Vikes and the Falcons, which is fantastic. Not home and away, Vikes and Falcons. And you can see the scoreboard this week as opposed to last week where at Legend High School, the scoreboard where they believe was in the fairgrounds. Yeah, we uh, we had, <laughs> yeah, had, had, to, had, had to be on the Ferris wheel in order to see the scoreboard last week. Casey, good mix of run and pass, very good balance. Duncan blankets of plays on his feet, you know, thick and quickly. And uh, that's a very, very positive start for the Falcons here, early going in this game. And if they talk about momentum builders and, and some positive stuff to happen, well, they just made it happen. Yeah, that was a really nice job that time uh, by Fitch, like you said, Keith with a little bit of mixture. They ran inside with Gibson. They ran outside with Johnson. The Letelier had a couple of throws to him. Uh, Duncan made a couple of nice, smart decisions, both in the running game and the passing game. So overall, you couldn't have asked for a better start. They overcame the big penalty. Um, I think right now Coach Mike Ellis is perfectly content. But now comes the, the, the second part of it, which is, you know, a defensive stop now. Now put the defense on defense out there and let them play because this Viking offense moved the ball very well last week against New London. Well, I'm sure that you know the kids get a little pep, a little more peppier on defense when the offense goes out there and produces a little bit too. Tyler Valdez and Gaiba as back deep, are back deep for East Line. St. Louis to the ball. Low line drive kick. Taken at the 15-yard line by the Vikings. Guy Bach comes up the middle, and he's going to try to get to the outside, but he's not going to be able to get there because number 14 of the Falcons, Tyrick Scott, got in there and made the tackle. Sun is going down here at East Lima High School. The lights are on, and my broadcast partner has absolutely no sweat on his brow. Well, you know, that's why I've come prepared with hat, undershirt, and under armor. I had the under armor on, that's right. Cheap, cheap plug. I gotta get, I gotta, we got to get an Under Armour sponsor. Both. we got to get a Look sponsorship this, from Under yes. Armour. You know, that's not bad. The stat guru to my left, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who the stat guru is, you got to come on down to East Lime High School. Check them out. Handoff goes straight up the middle. Vikings on first down. Nothing there. Run was by Josh Bowman, big number 45 of the Vikings. Nothing there. Center of the Falcon line uh, that time, led by Fresco Stevens. Put a stop. It's going to be second and ten. 7.24 remaining here in the first period. Falcons on top, 7 nothing. 
the quarterback of the East Lime Vikings, Dylan Hedicek. Hedicek in a tight set with Bowman behind him. This time the pitch goes to Travis Franco. Franco gets back up to the 27-yard line for maybe a gain of one off of left tackle, but that Fitch defense stout on the first two plays and put East Lime into third and third and seven, perhaps. Ball at the 26-yard line. Sideline to sideline pursuit. Very, very solid that time for the Fitch defense. And they bring up a, again, one of those downs where you don't want to be in. Third and six, third and seven, third and eight. A challenging third down for East Lyme. Yeah, Fitch running the 4-4 with a lot of speed in those linebackers. Head of check brings the Vikings to the line. Bowman is the setback. Straight back. Head of check. He's going to throw. Nice pass. Floated down the middle of the field. And it is complete at the 55-yard line. To number three, Elijah Brylis. I'm sorry, number number seven. I take that back. Number seven, Travis Franco. I was crediting a sophomore that probably is not on the field right now. Travis Franco with the catch. Great pass that time by Hedicek off of the play action. First down, Vikings all the way into Fitch territory, 45-yard line. Well, what made that play successful for East Lyme is they had protection up front. Quarterback had some time to sit back and... Uh, you know, Franco got behind the defense. It's a big play. Evan Tryon split left. Bowman in the backfield. Bowman gets the handoff straight up the middle. Gain of five on first down off left tackle that time by Bowman. Johnny Johnson comes up for the tackle for Fitch. Fitch, uh, East Lime offensive line now, Casey, now looking to pick up ahead of his team. You know, they got a big 30-yard pass play. Now let's run the football. Let's get back to basics here. Second and six. For the Vikings, five minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first period. 7 nothing. Fitch. East Lime with its first offensive possession, converted on a big third down play. Here they have it second and six from the 41-yard line. Hedicek is your quarterback. Snap. Handoff goes to number five, Lorenz Simpkins. He tries to get to the outside, but not a lot there. Great job of pursuit that time by the Falcons, led by number 12, Raphael Adams. Yeah, quick counter play that time by East Lime was going nowhere. Sideline to sideline pursuit by those Fitch linebackers. Very good early going in this game. So we've seen a little bit of Simpkins. We've seen a little bit of Bowman. And we've seen the, the pass of Hedicek to Franco. So East Lime spreading the ball out a little bit here early as well. Third and two, a short third down. Anything can happen on a play like this. They're going to send Evan Tryon wide left. Travis Franco. Bowman behind Hedicek. Had a check, straight handoff to Bowman out of the power eye, and the Bowman driving the legs forward, and I think he's going to have a first down as he carried Fitch defenders, and he does. Another first down at the hands of Bowman, Josh Bowman, the big back, number 45 of your East Line Vikings. They've got a first down into Fitch 39-yard line, the 39-yard line of the Falcons. 4.30 remaining here in the first period, 7 nothing Falcons, but East Line got a little something brewing on their first possession. Evan Tryon splits left. Bowman is the lone setback. Head a check. Oh, but Bowman took a step, got off a little bit too quickly. That's going to be a five-yard penalty on the Vikings. It'll bring it first and 15. Four minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first period. 7 nothing Fitch. Some of those plays there, Casey, the, the holding, the, the offsides, the false starts, the drive killers uh, for some of these high school teams. First and 15s at... Heck of a lot different than first and ten. East Lime uh, has, you know, done a nice job on this uh, first series of converting a big third down and also doing uh, some, you know, different things to the different backs. So this time they send Travis Franco to the right and Evan Tryon is split left. Head a check. Fake handoff. Rolls out to his left. Looking downfield. Throws the ball up and it is caught by... Number 21, Evan Tryon, all the way down to the 20-yard line. And I got to tell you, Dylan Hedicek's got a nice arm. Yeah, Hedicek was on the edge that time and saw his receiver downfield, had plenty of time to set his feet, square his body, and throw a strike. Good for about 15 yards down the field. So we've seen long passes to Evan Tryon and to Travis Franco, a couple of different Receivers bringing in nice passes, long passes 40, from Hedicek. 45 yards passing, Casey, if you had to check early going in this drive. 
East line with the ball at the Fitch 19-yard line. 3.23 remaining in the first period. 7-0 Falcons. East line rushing to get it set. Try on split right. Bowman is the back. Head a check. Pitches instead on the edge. It goes to Franco. Franco cuts it back inside. And a nice gain on first down by Travis Franco, the senior. It's going to get about eight yards, and we're going to have a short second down for East Line. Positive yardage on first down. That's what it's all about in this game. Going to be second and four. Ball down to the 11, 15, to the 12-yard line. So the 12-yard line is where East Line has the ball right now. It's their first offensive possession of the game. A nice sustained drive by the Vikings looking to tie this thing up as Fitch went right down the field in its opening drive and scored the first points of the game. Simpkins is the tailback. Bowman the fullback. They're in the eye. Had a check to Simpkins and nothing there. Nice job that time by the Falcons. Parker Gibson shooting in from his linebacker spot and stopped Simpkins for no gain. Sellout linebacker run blitz that time by Fitch. Casey, big stop there. We're going to bring up third down. Obviously, the East Line quarterback get on the move here a little bit and throw the ball. They're not afraid to. No, Hedicek's got a nice job. He's looked very comfortable uh, rolling out and uh, to his weak side. He also has d done a very nice job in play action. So I think right now, you know, you've gotten multiple receivers who have touched the ball. This time, the Vikings send Evan Tryon wide left. Bowman is the setback. Hedicek. Pitches to Bowman. Bowman cuts it off left tackle. And right up towards the first down marker. I think he might be right at the marker. Third and seven. Interesting. They have a lot of confidence in Josh Bowman to give him a toss sweep on third and seven. But he did a nice job. Got all the way down to the pylon. I think he's going to be just, just short. And they're going to call it fourth and maybe a foot. Coach Rudy Bagos may be thinking two down territory down there on third down as well. So positive yardage will bring up a short fourth and one. Fourth and a very short one. The size of a of a size 10 shoe. Bowman is your setback. And we have a timeout on the field. Timeout by Fitch. One minute and six seconds remaining in the first period. Falcons on top, 7-0. But East Lime is driving and knocking. They have a fourth and a foot from the 11-yard line. You're listening to Game Day on the day.com. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor. Keith O'Brien, we've got the stat guru, handsome as ever to my left, and the junior voice game day patrolling in behind me. we got pizza in the booth. we got a beautiful Friday night. We've got an East Lime scoreboard that is new, modern, thing. and easy to read. It is a perfect night. It's all coming together, and so far, we've got ourselves a quality football game. Now, Casey, early going in this game, too. Both coaches not afraid to put the game in the hands of their quarterbacks, whether it's Duncan or Hedicek. Both have been asked to, to move their feet. Both have been asked to throw the ball. And so far, so good on, on both teams. Yeah, I'm really impressed so far. Hedicek is only a sophomore. That's a bright future for a kid who can throw the ball that well and who looks that comfortable rolling out in both directions and play action from the pocket. I think, obviously, East Lime feels they are in good hands with Dylan Hedicek. Fitch will have to find a way to put some sort of pressure on him as the game moves forward. Uh, from the linebacker position of creeps and back people tough to, do, tough to do because we've seen Josh Bowman very, very comfortable. And we'll see what happens here. Janovic and Bowman in the backfield. Head a check. Barks it out. Pitches to Bowman. And Bowman is met in the backfield. But he breaks tackles. But great pursuit by the Falcon defense. And they stop Bowman and the Vikings on fourth and a foot. Turnover on downs. What a disappointing end to a great drive by East Lime. Yeah, Fitch linebacker shooting the gap. Initial contact in the backfield. Bowman could not break free, and then the pursuit came. Listen, great stand by the Fitch Falcon defense here early in this game. It gets Duncan and the offense back on the field. Dante Paul along with Parker Gibson, Raphael Adams, all kinds of swarming defense by the Falcons. First and ten, Fitch. Ball at their own 11-yard line. One minute remaining in the first period. Duncan hands the ball off. Keeps it himself. Faked it to Parker Gibson. Kept it himself. And Robert Duncan's going to gain maybe a yard. Coming out of the pack for the Falcons was Travis Franco. It's going to be second and ten, and we're under a minute. It's a very swift moving first quarter. A lot of running plays and a lot of completed passes. It was a, and only two penalties. So, so far, so good. Both teams have to be pleased. East Lions got to be disappointed. 
after such a quality drive to come away with no points. And what a boost for Fitch. Let's see if they can get some first downs now. They send Trent Evans and Cleon McClish wide left. In the shotgun is Duncan. He rolls to the right. Duncan throws to the sideline, complete to Letelier. And that's going to be a first down Fitch. Nice throw by Duncan. Nice catch by Letelier. Easy pickings for Rob Duncan on the edge. Again, moving his feet, squares his body, throws downfield a strike for 13 yards. All the way up to the 28-yard line. First and 10 Falcons at their own 28. We saw Duncan two weeks ago at a scrimmage game against Montville, and he's improved quite a bit, Casey, since then. Looked a lot more comfortable, a lot more in rhythm, and uh, had a lot more fundamentals to uh, to the pro that time. Set his feet. Letelier and Albin split left. Toss goes to Sebastian. Sebastian trying to get to the edge, and he's going to be run down out there by Hedicek. Hedicek, the quarterback, also plays cornerback, and he ran down Albin. Ah, excuse me, Sebastian. East-West running by Sebastian ran an awful long way to gain six yards on the play that brings us to the end of the first quarter Casey where Fitch leads seven to nothing as we head into the start of the second quarter and check that that was Brett Bragaw out there not head a check sometimes these numbers at night with my vision you know my vision isn't what it used to be Keith yeah, certainly and the Fitch numbers give you a hard time anyway I actually told coach you Mike Ellis I said can you do me a favor and you know get better uniforms for the for us broadcasters and he, he laughed he said you know yes I'll I'll put that on my priority list with the regrowing of a program and, and the teaching of the fundamentals to children and, and you know getting p kids to come out and enjoy the game of football. I'll, I'll put satisfying your needs right up there on that list. Too. You actually approached the coaching staff about the numbers. I did. I approached the fish staff, and I said, you've got to change your uniforms because for us broadcasters, it's really difficult. So we are about to start the second quarter here at East Lime High School. Fitch on top 7 nothing after a strong opening drive that netted them seven points on a Johnny Johnston touchdown run. East Lime got their first possession of the first half, drove all the way the length of the field, but was stopped on fourth and a foot by a swarming Falcon defense, and now the Falcons uh, got a quick first down on their opening possession of their, their second possession, and now are at the 39-yard line, uh, their own 39-yard line, now going left to right are the Fitch Falcons, first and ten. Robert Duncan is your quarterback. Parker Gibson is the fullback. Duncan hands off to Gibson. Gibson's going to get maybe two. He's going to bring up third and maybe three yards. Nice job that time by the interior of the Vikings line. East line defense kind of sewing things up, up the middle. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, since that first drive, and it's been tough sledding on this carry on this uh, possession for Fitch going up the gut, Casey. Fitch runs well, possibly my favorite offensive name, the Flex Bone. That's a Flex Bone they're running out there, a flexible version of the Wishbone. Duncan under center. Gibson is his set. Duncan, quick toss to Letelier. Letelier, oh, he had to try to run before he made the catch. He heard the footsteps of Evan Tryon. And Luke Letelier only had one man to beat. He wish he had that one back. That's the second time that Fitch has tried that little wide receiver screen, a little one-on-one -on -one action on the outside, and the second time the pass has been incomplete. Well, you had uh, Evan Tryon out there one-on-one -on -one with Letelier. If Letelier can break a tackle, he's got a lot of running room ahead of him. That's a dangerous play. East Lyme very happy that he dropped the ball. And now Duncan will punt. Low snap. Duncan gets off a high spiraling kick. It bounces at the 34-yard line and takes a Falcon roll all the way down to the 25-yard line. And that's where the Vikings will set up shop. First and 10 from their own 25-yard line. 11 minutes and 7 seconds remaining in the first half. 7-0. Fitch on top. The second quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by the Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut. Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut is the region's leading STEM-themed school. The nationally recognized magnet program prepares students to succeed, not just during their four years of high school, but for a future beyond the magnet school. Transform your passion for science, technology, engineering, or math to reality at the Science and Technology Magnet School. They're now accepting applications for next school year. Learn more and apply online at nltmhs.com. First and ten, East Lime, head a check in the shotgun, gets the snap, looking to throw, pressured, rolls right, throws downfield, and incomplete looking for... Evan Tryon, and he just couldn't keep his feet in bounds and bring the pass in. 
defended by Isaiah Sebastian, but man, I, you know what? I got to tell you, Hedicek can throw the football. Hedicek's not afraid to let it loose. He's got a strong arm for only a sophomore. Tryon's got a little speed on the outside. Good defensive pressure and pursuit by the fifth shot defense to try and throw off the rhythm of Hedicek on that play. Second and ten, and every pass we've seen Hedicek throw has been downfield. He likes to throw the ball. Uh, unlike the Fitch, uh, you know, Duncan, who has thrown a lot of screens and short passes, Hedicek has thrown the ball deep. Travis Franco is your split right. Try on left. Power eye. Hedicek rolls right. Pressured. And he's trying to get a screen off, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get the screen to Josh Bowman. Pressure that time by Fresco Stevens of the Falcons disrupted the screen attempt. It was basically a wholesale blitz by the Falcons' defense. They brought everybody but their their, their safeties in. Big-time pressure up the middle on the check. Really kind of threw that timing off on that play, Casey. Front four, Trent Evans, Ben Guzman, Fresco Stevens, and Dante Paul were all in on check that time as he tried to get it into Bowman. And we're going to have a timeout Vikings with 10.53 remaining in the first half, uh, Falcons on top, 7 to nothing. Uh, it's a good football game here early. we got a nice crowd here at East Lime High School as well. And, you know, for those of you who are listening at home, you can't see it, but there's a, a ton of people here. It's a beautiful place to see a football game. And we're seeing mistake-free football so far, Casey. A couple penalties here or there. But, you know, both of these coaches putting a lot on the shoulders of their quarterbacks in the early going. I think both teams have already come out a little crisper than they were last week. East Lime, of course, struggled against New London and Fitch against Plainfield. But Coach Mike Ellis said, you know, that's what you look for. When you've lost 13 in a row, what you look for is we need to get better week by week. And you kind of kind of let the wins and losses come as they come. But there, his goal tonight was not to, to win necessarily. Of course, that's the, always the outcome. His goal was to make discernible improvements on both sides of the ball as well as special teams, because we saw them struggle with snaps on punts in our, in our scrimmage. So already, they've been crisper on both sides of the ball. And Coach Rudy Baggers told me on the phone last night, they're playing NFA next week. They'd like to win this week's game. Trips right for the Vikings. In the shotgun is Hedicek. Hedicek rolls, pressured by Paul. Hedicek down the middle of the field, and it's incomplete, and we're going to have a flag. And if that's pass interference against Fitch, it's a terrible penalty, because Hedicek was being pressured by Dante Paul and just threw it up for grabs to midfield. And there were all kinds of bodies at midfield. I think the penalty could be on number 13 for Fitch. That would be Luke Lettelier. Seemed to be on the back of the receiver try on. Tough time that time. Fitch had triple coverage. There were more Fitch defenders than there were East Lime receivers in the area of the pass. I think everybody had a right to that football. That is a tough penalty against Fitch. Now, we have seen that kind of penalty cripple them in the past with a young and experienced team. When Again, when you've lost 13 in a row, penalties like that can be disheartening. An automatic first down for East Lime. Let's see how the Falcons' defense can respond. First and 10 East Lime at their own 40 going right to left. 10.45 remaining here in the first half. Tryon is your split left. Bowman, the lone setback. Head a check. Handoff to Ryan Janovic. And Janovic tries to cut it up off a right tackle. Minimal gain, maybe two. Bring up second and eight. Vikings now into the 42 yard line, heading to trying to get over midfield for the second time today. Beautiful night here at East Lime High School. You're listening to Game Day on the Day.com. Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, our cast of thousands floating around the campus of East Lyme High School. Tryon, out wide left for the Vikings, head a check. Pitches to Franco again. Franco, ridden out of bounds, hit immediately coming out of the pack. Parker Gibson for the Fitch for the Falcons, and it's going to bring up third and long for the Vikings. Yeah, Fitch in that 4-4 defense. Quick pursuit again by the linebackers. We're going to talk about that all game long. Side-to-side -side pursuit. Not a lot of running room north and south for the Vikings on that play. East Lime is averaging just one and a half yards per carry early going here tonight, Case. Yeah, they've had more success in the air. Evan Tryon goes out to the left. Janovic along with Franco. Bowman's the lone set. 
Head a check under center. Head a check rolls to his weak side. He's got pressure from Gibson. Throws the ball downfield. Incomplete. He was looking at Travis Franco coming all the way across the field on a long post corner route. Good pressure that time by Parker Gibson. And the throw is incomplete. It's going to be fourth down, and the Vikings will have to punt. That is three straight incompletions now by Hedicek. Dylan Hedicek after some early success. And it's going to bring on the punter for the East Lime Vikings. Snap is good. Kick is high. Spiraling kick. Lands at the 32-yard line, takes an east line, great east line bounce, all the way ins to the 10-yard line where the Vikings down it. What a great result that time for east line as that punt took an outlandish Vikings bounce, and Fitch is going to set up shop first and 10 from their own 10. Casey, nice job by the Fitch defense, buckling down after that big pass interference penalty. They got the ball back, they're pinned against their own goal line here a little bit, but let's see if they can... Flip field position, make something happen here against East Lyme. I, I like the way Fitch responded there after the penalty, Kennedy, Casey. They gave East Lyme nothing. Yeah, three, they, it would have been three and out without the penalty, and then they took and went and three right. and out in a row. So it's essentially six no, no gain plays for East Lyme off of with that Fitch defense. The Falcons from their own 10, 9.37 remaining here in the first half. Gibson is the setback. Duncan. Hands the ball off to Gibson. We have a flag on the interior where normally we will see holding, and if that's the case, it is going to back Fitch up all the way onto the shadow of their own goal line. 9.25 remaining. Falcons on top, 7 nothing. Fitch is in a tough spot here. We have first and 15 from probably the 6 or 7-yard line, and that's a very, very tough place to open up the offensive playbook, Casey. Yeah, Mike Ellis, the head coach of the Falcons, was very clear. They needed to establish both the interior run as well as the short passing game so that they could use their speed to the outside. If either one of those two things were being affected by either penalties or poor execution, he said they become a very easy team to defend. The officials are spotting the ball from the 10 and walking it half the distance to the goal. So the ball will be spotted at the five-yard line, and it will be first and 15 at their own five-yard line. Falcons with a 7 nothing lead, but not in good shape here on this possession with the ball on their own five-yard line. You know, East Lion plays an assignment-based defense, but might be a good time to bring a little pressure. Bring a little pressure up the middle, stop gap the runs, and uh, put some pressure on Duncan. Trent Evans wide left, let a leer. Johnson goes in motion, pitch to Johnny Johnson. He gets to the edge, cuts it up. Johnson's got some room, and all the way down the left sideline for a first down. Nice run that time by number 32, Johnny Johnson of the Fitch Falcons. First down, Fitch. There's that Fitch speed on the outside. Good tackling, uh, good blocking, I'm sorry, by the, uh, by the wide receivers down the field. And Johnson turned on the Jets as he crossed the line of scrimmage, Casey. Good pickup. Johnson, not one of the players on Fitch that is normally associated with the great speed. He, of course, had the, the strength and broken tackle on the touchdown run earlier, but that time he showed off the Jets. Duncan keeps it himself. Duncan has a first down, and out of bounds, Robert Duncan with a first down. The previous play, they said Johnson had stepped out a yard short, so it was second and one, and Duncan, of course, picks up the first down there. Yeah, option look that time by Duncan coming down the line. Fake the inside hand off to the fullback. Took it himself over the left edge and gain of nine, Casey, on that play. And Fitch is out of the shadow of their own end zone in just two plays. All the way up to the 27-yard line. 8.47 remaining here in the first half. Falcons on top, 7-0. Letelier is the setback. Duncan. Ball's loose, ball's loose. Vikings recover. Miscommunication on the handoff that time. And there's that Falcon inexperience and what we heard from Coach Mike Ellis, their own worst enemy, put the ball on the turf, recovered by East Lime, and East Lime in great shape, first and 10 at the Fitch 25-yard line. Inside handoff, misdirection play. Duncan was late getting the ball into the fullback's belly. The ball hits the ground, and East Lime is in business, setting up shop at the Falcons' 24-yard line. 
See what the Vikings can do. They've had six consecutive plays of a yard or less. They send Tryon split left. Bowman is the tailback. Head a check under center. Head a check. Hands to Bowman. Bowman up the middle. Stood up by the linebackers, but with a head of steam over the top goes Josh Bowman. Nice gain of about six yards on first down. Run blitz that time by the Fitch Falcons. Bowman broke through that first wave, got into the second level, and made something out of nothing by moving his legs, Casey. Going to bring up a manageable second and six. Nice four-yard gain that Tough time. Tough running. Yeah, Josh, Tough running. Josh Bowman that time did that pretty much all on his own by keeping his legs moving and keeping his center of gravity low. Got through that front four of the Falcons and made something out of nothing. Second and six. We're now down to eight minutes remaining here in the first half. Seven nothing Falcons. Tryon split left. Head a check. And we have a whistle on the field. Timeout. On the field, timeout East Line, their second of the first half. And that's a good time to tell you that our second quarter is brought to you by the Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut. The Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut is the region's leading STEM-themed school. You know, the nationally recognized magnet program prepares students to succeed, not just during their four years of high school, but for a future beyond the magnet school. You can transform your passion for science, technology, engineering, or math. That's what STEM stands for. You can transform it to reality at STMHS. That's the Science and Technology Magnet High School. They are now accepting applications for next school year. Learn more and apply online at NLTMHS.com. You know, Josh Bowman, fullback for East Lime, he's very, very workmanlike here out in this game. You know, he's, he's not the biggest, he's not the strongest, but he seems like he get the most out of his ability out there. He's a tough running kid, Casey, north and south. Very, very hard for Fitch to handle. If he breaks that first wave getting through the front line, you know, he can get you six or seven yards out of chunk. Yeah, not fancy. Hits, no. Hits the hole quick and makes what, you know, what makes the most of what he has. Uh, but the he kind just of likes run, moving. Those, it's the body punches, softening up the body. Head a check. Fakes and pressured and sacked. Down goes head a check and coming out of the pile number 10, Dante Paul. We've called his name a lot tonight. Paul has provided consistent pressure that time, along with the interior of the Fitch line, Ben Guzman and Fresco Stevens got pressure and sacked, had a check for a loss. That Fitch defense was not falling for that play fake on that time. Players stayed home, pressure from the edge, going to bring up an almost an impossible third and 12 right now for East Line. Big, big sack, Casey. Third and 12, look for Fitch to bring pressure. Ball at the 26-yard line of the Falcons, trips left. For East Lime, head a check in the shotgun. Snap is good. Head a check. Quick toss and incomplete. He had Evan Tryon on the wide receiver screen, but could not handle it. He was, again, looking to run and get those blocks set up before he actually had possession of the football, and it's going to bring up fourth down and 12 for East Lime. Yeah, bubble screen on the left-hand side of the field, and again, like you mentioned, Tryon is looking downfield before the ball is actually in the breadbasket. He had the receivers setting up their blocks. He had it in front of him. The play just, was developing. Just couldn't hold on. Tryon comes back out wide left. Split right is Liam McCarthy. Head a check. Drops. Throws down for Tryon. Back corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Nice defense that time by Isaiah Sebastian. Had him open in the corner, but threw the ball to the wrong shoulder. Uh, miscommunication on that play. Tryon was running to the post. And Hedeshek was throwing the ball to the pylon. And will be turnover on downs for East Lime. And I guess that's just a little lack of communication between the sophomore quarterback and his receiver. They have what they wanted. They had a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. It was just a bad throw or a bad route run by the receiver, you tell me. So twice now East Lime has had the ball deep into Fitch territory. And twice they turn it over on fourth down. Duncan. Pitch. It goes and stopped for no gain is Cleon McClish. In fact, he's going to lose five yards out of that flex bone. McClish took the handoff and a nice job by the Vikings. And pursuing and making the tackle was Will Flaherty. Nice job that time by Flaherty stopping McClish for a six-yard loss. Side-to-side -side pursuit by the East Lime defense. And again, maybe Coach Rudy Bagos will be a little more aggressive with 
Six minutes, six and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter and keep Fitch on this end of the field. Johnson is the setback. Gibson got too many men in motion. That's going to be a flag. Duncan running the option. Ball's on the turf. But this is all going to be for not because there's going to be a legal motion against Fitch. Officials are waving it off. That play should have been whistled dead before it ever got started as Fitch had two men in motion. There it is. Against the Falcons. That can back them up five. It's going to bring up second and 22. So two guys moving in the offensive backfield before the ball is snapped would be considered cheating, would it not? Well, it would be considered a rule penalty. A, a penalty. A rules a rules not cheating, but a rules violation. Uh, cheating in indicates intent. There was no intent there. They did not intend to do that. Uh, a rules violation. I'm yes. like... I understand like, you're, you a, you're, you're a Patriots say. fan, so che no, cheating is in your vocabulary. I was waiting for that. 6-13 remaining here in the first half. 7 nothing Falcons on top of the Vikings. Now, you got to be a little concerned if you're Coach Mike Ellis because offensively, you know what? They're going to say that that, that that I thought it's a dead ball foul. It's not. I did too. Vikings have recovered, and the Vikings will have the football again. Wow. Second consecutive time. Fitch has turned the ball over deep in their end. Wow. Head a check. Hands off to Lorenz Simpkins, and Simpkins off of right tackle all the way down to about the 10 yard line, maybe the 11. Good gain on first down. By Simpkins, let there be light. As why didn't I think of that? A little confusion there, as both guys in the booth thought that that was a dead ball foul on the offense, and it wasn't. East Lime recovered the fumble. Now they're in business case. I don't know how. I I I, 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 I always thought that 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 was like a illegal procedure penalty, but I am wrong. So that's more like an illegal shift, and uh, that, that the fumble counts. East Lime ball. gets the uh, ball. They're now at the ten yard line of the Falcons, second and five. Uh, and this is the now third time they've had the ball deep in their own, in East uh, in Fitch territory. Let's see if they can capitalize. Head a check again to Simpkins. Simpkins breaks a tackle. He's down to the, by the first down marker. Feet driving close to the first down. Lorenz Simpkins. It's going to bring up either third and short or first and goal. Let's see where the spot is. Simpkins and Bauman, both fullbacks, both. Big people up front, the ability to keep their legs moving in heavy traffic during contact. That game was all on Simpkins right there. Third and a foot, and I am telling you right now, this is two down territory for for East Lime. They will take two cracks at this. They're going to send Tryon out wide to the left. Bowman is the lone setback. And we have a whistle on the play, and we're going to have a timeout on the field. Timeout, Falcons. Or timeout East Lime. Officials say timeout Fitch. 4.42 remaining. 7 nothing Falcons on top of the East Lime Vikings. You're listening to Game Day on the day.com. We're live at East Lime High School. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. The stat guru sitting to my left. And the junior voice of Game Day roving the booth along with Mike DeMora on the field. The genius that is Peter Wappy, Along with the talented Game Day crew. Bringing you live high school football action. And of course... On Tuesday morning, take a look at theday.com for what is can only be considered an Emmy-caliber NFL Films quality highlight package. Live mic uh, coaches, live footage of halftime in the locker rooms, all edited by Peter Wappy. And i got to say, I showed it to people uh, throughout the course of the week, the footage from the, the Ledger game, and people said, who did that? Is that, is that ESPN? Is that, is that from? I said, no, that's theday.com, and they all wanted to know. How does it? How is it so good? No, it's great. Just the, everybody involved in the project is, um, you know, it's it's. We're fortunate enough to be part of this project. It's a tremendous, uh, tremendous project. Now, if I had Mike up, Coach Bagos during that timeout, he probably said, "Listen, offensive line, strap on your boots because he's going to ride right behind you." Third and half yard. Head check gives it to Bowman. Bowman's going to have the first down. He's driving towards the goal line, and it's going to be first and goal. East line. Was there any doubt in your mind that Bowman was not going to get the ball there on third and half a yard? Josh Bowman with the first down. 4.34 remaining here in the first half. 7 nothing Falcons, but East Line is knock, knock, knocking on touchdown's door, looking to tie this thing up late in the first half. That's a pretty good analogy. You're good at that. You're good at that. Trivia, all that kind of stuff. I am. Music, uh, sports. You know, I'm a, what they call a renaissance man, Keith. Bowman is your setback in the... Under the snap is head a check, head a check to Bowman. Bowman puts his head down, waiting for the official signal. Touchdown, Eastline Vikings. Josh Bowman, the big fella. 
Strong legs, keeping it moving even after contact. That is Bowman's game. And no doubt about that score. And East Lime capitalizes on the Fitch turnover, Casey. We are one point away from a tie ball game. The big guy, Bowman, with it, puts his head down. Eight carries for 23 yards and a touchdown for Bowman in the first half. Brett Bragaw, snap good, kick is good. We are all tied up with four minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the first half. It's the East Lime High School Vikings 7, the Fitch High School Falcons 7. You're listening to Game Day Live on the day.com. You know, East Lime had to cash in on that Fitch turnover. You know, they went up and down the field in the, in the first series. Um, it was a set up perfectly for them to get back in the game. And East Lime did what they had to do, and they relied on their fullbacks to get the yardage come pay dirt, Casey. Very, very important for East Lime there to get points and a touchdown, more so than a field goal. So, you know, we've seen a little bit of, of the helter-skelter nature of both teams. We've seen a Fitch team that went down the field on first on its first yeah, drive, sure. score a touchdown. Sure. And we've seen them turn the ball over twice deep in their own end, in their own territory this last time, finally costing them. On the other side of things, their defense has played great, except they just keep getting put into these, you know, impossible situations. Again, this is the ebb and flow of these games with a couple of teams who are searching for a little bit of identity and trying to find a way to how to win a game. You know, Fitch is going to have to overcome this if they're going to want to win the ball game. Let's see what they can do. Is uh, you know, it's still plenty of time left to go in their first half and. It's, it's just what you're going to have to do to overcome some of these setbacks. Bragas set the kickoff for the Vikings, having just tied the game at 7 with 4.17 remaining here in the first half. Bragas, great long end over end kick taken by Johnson, who lets it bounce, and now Johnson picks it up at his own 5. Johnny Johnson straight up the middle for Fitch, breaks a tackle, gets into some open space to the 25-yard line. Nice return by Johnny Johnson of the Fitch Falcons. And Fitch will set up shop first and 10 from their own 25, 4.09 remaining in the first half. Yeah, if I was Coach Ellis, I would get back to the basics a little bit with Duncan. I would try to get him back on the edge a little bit. They had some success in the first draft, first drive, I'm sorry, throwing the ball on the move a little bit, finding his receivers, Casey, trying to utilize some of his speed on the outside. 4.09 remaining here in the first half. We are all brand new, 7-7, Vikings and Falcons. Robert Duncan in the flex bone for the Falcons. In motion, McClish. Duncan hands the ball straight up the middle to Parker Gibson. Gibson breaks a tackle and falls forward after a gain of maybe a yard and a half. It's going to bring up second and long for the Falcons. 3.56 remaining here in the first half. East line clearly with a little bit of momentum right now. Trent Evans runs in the play for Fitch. The diminutive quarterback, Robert Duncan. Diminutive. Going to bring them up to the line. He's going to send Letelier wide right. And Evans wide left. Straight drop. Duncan on the slant. Tipped. Tried to get Letelier on the slant. Ball was tipped at the line and incomplete. Nice, time, nice job by the East Lime defense that time. Number 82, Sam Hyman, got his fingertips on that football, and it's going to bring up third and six. Three-step drop that time by Duncan. Quick slant defended very well by the big people up front for East Lyman. Number seven, Travis Franco, urging his defense on the field right now. Let's step up. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field on third down. Duncan gives it up the middle to Gibson. Gibson moving forward. He's going to be short of first down. A very conservative third down and six play that time by Fitch. Parker Gibson gets four, but that's going to bring up fourth and two. And with the ball at their own 32-yard line, you can expect Robert Duncan to punt it away for the Falcons. Option look coming down the line that time for Fitch Casey. And is this a point at the game where Coach Ellis does not want his quarterback to make a mistake, and that's why he ran the ball? I think he wants to try to see East Lime go the length of the field and not give them another short field. What a flip field position. Yeah, three minutes left before the first half. I think he wants to get in safe. Good snap. Duncan takes his time. High spiraling kick. Lands at the 40-yard line and takes a Falcon bounce and will go out of bounds at the 31-yard line. That's where East Lime will take over. First and 10 from its own 31 239 remaining here in the first half. Hey, East Lamb will have to go 70 yards now with just about two and a half minutes to go left in the first half. And 
you know, maybe it paid off for Fitch to, to punt the ball all the way there. We well, got to remember the last it's two safe times, play. Yeah, the last two times that Fitch had the ball deep in their own end zone and in, in their own territory, they lost the ball and gave East Lyman an opportunity, and they ended up tying the game. I think he just wanted to. His defense, the Fitch defense, has played very well uh, as a whole, but you know, obviously can't keep giving up, uh, can't keep getting onto the field into bad situation. So, first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Head of check leads the Vikings up to the line. Head of check. Hands off. Up the middle it goes to Ryan Janovic. Janovic is going to gain about four yards on first down. We're now down close to two minutes, two and a half remaining here in the first half. You're going to join us for the MJ Sullivan Halftime Show where Keith O'Brien will have a special halftime guest coming up on the MJ Sullivan Halftime Show. For those of you who remember Doug Flutie and the Boston College Eagles, we have a member of the Cotton Bowl Boston College Eagles team coming on with Keith at halftime. So two minutes remaining in the first half. Tryon and Franco are split. Toss to Janovic. Janovic up to the first down marker off a right tackle, and he's going to be stopped just short. It's going to bring up third and maybe a foot for the Vikings. Under two minutes now remaining in the first half. East Lyme offense not working with any kind of particular fast pace or sense of urgency here. Uh, as we wind down, Casey, uh, I think they're pretty content with going to the locker room right now. It's, it's tied at 7 unless they can get a big play on offense. Yeah, I think both teams are happy going into halftime 7-7 seven, seven and, and seeing what they – I think both teams should feel confident about their second halves. Tryon is the lone split. Janovic hands it off up the middle. It goes to Bowman. Nothing there that time. On third down, I'm not sure he got the first down. We're going to see where the spot is. They're going to spot it short. He did not get it. It's going to bring up fourth and a foot from their own 40-yard line, and we're going to have to see a Vikings punt. They cannot risk having the ball turn over to Fitch deep in territory. So at the 40-yard line with a minute remaining, and we're about to get under a minute, East Line will have to punt it away, tied 7-7 with just under a minute remaining in the first half. A little bit of confusion on the field. Looks like they want to bring the chains out. It looked like the officials marked him well short, but they want to measure and see exactly what it is. Chains come out, and he is going to be about a foot short. About six chain lengths. So with 57 seconds remaining in the first half, it will be fourth and six chain lengths of a football, but I think that's enough to force East Lime to punt. You would not want to turn the ball over here, but we shall see what the Vikings decide to do. Again, join Keith O'Brien at halftime for the MJ Sullivan Halftime Report. He'll have scores from around the, the region, as well as stats live from the Stat Guru on what we saw here in the first half. And a halftime interview with a member of the Boston College Eagles from the Cotton Bowl era, the Doug Flutie era. If you want to know who it is and what's going on, you got to stay tuned for the MJ Sullivan Halftime Peter Show. Boston College is playing Florida State tonight. With a former Notre Dame quarterback, Everett Golson, as the starting quarterback of the Florida State Seminoles. And the former Norwich Free Academy tailback, Marcus Outlow, at tailback for the BC, Mike DeMorrow's BC Eagles. Yes, Mike DeMorrow's you BC Eagles. Yes, if anyone didn't know that Mike DeMorrow is a Boston College graduate, just look at the back of his car where his license plate reads BC grad. He's very proud of that. I thought he meant he graduated. He's so old that he graduated college in B.C. That's what I thought it meant. But 57 seconds remaining here in the first half. 7-7, seven, seven, Vikings and Falcons. And, Keith, so far I think both teams are probably thinking that they have the advantage going into the second half. I think it's a good football, team, good football game right now, and I think both teams are very confident. They go into the locker room. They make the adjustments a little bit. Uh, you know, Fitch can clean up the turnovers a little bit. Uh, you know, they're going to be in, in business here. Uh, very, very, I, I think a very good play first half. All right, so the Vikings are going to go for it on fourth and sixth chain links, or they're going to try to draw a Fitch offside. So let's see what quarterback Dylan Hedichick does here. Under center, barking, barking. He got, and he got a Falcon to move. He got a Falcon to move. Great job by Hedichick. He got Trent Evans to jump on the left side on the strong count, and that's going to be a first down for the Vikings. That can't happen, Casey. That cannot happen in a football game like this. If nothing else, if nothing else, it allows East Lime to run the clock out here before halftime. 
First and 10, Vikings now with the ball at their own 46-yard line. 57 seconds remaining here in the first half of what has been a uneven but evenly played matchup between the East Line Vikings and the Fitch Falcons. Hedicek's going to go from the shotgun. He's got trips right and try on wide left. Snap is good. Hedicek, straight drop. Looking down the sideline for Tryon. Down deep it goes. He's got Tryon. And the ball is complete at the 20-yard line. Tryon went up and took it away from Isaiah Sebastian, who had great coverage. First down, Vikings, and now they're knocking. They're in the red zone. Great pass that time by Hedicek to Evan Tryon. One-on-one -on -one with Isaiah Sebastian, and he came down with it. Huge pass play in East Lime, trying to make Fitch pay for that costly offsides penalty. By Hedicek throws a nice deep ball down the left side. One-on-one -on -one with Tryon. Kid went up and made a nice catch there, Casey. And they have got Fitch on its heels. Yeah, yeah. Hedicek has three completions for 84 yards in this game. Hedicek fakes the handoff. Rolls, pressured, and down goes Hedicek at the hands of Dante Paul. Dante Paul has been a beast on the right end all night long for the Falcons. Blindsides Hedicek, who had time but did not have an open receiver. That's what we call the coverage sack in the business. Great defensive secondary work by the Fitch Falcons. Vikings might have a chance for one more play. Hedicek's going to spike the ball with four seconds remaining. So there Big will be sack. one more chance at a Hail Mary type of play, he has four seconds remaining here in the first half. You know, a sack like that will take him out of field goal range as well, Casey. That was a huge play and great, great coverage uh, in the secondary by the Falcons defense. Falcons went zone coverage that time and Don just wanted to give Dante Paul the time he needed to get to the quarterback. He's been close, a step away all night, got there that You time. saw a head of check, pump once, pump twice, nowhere to go with the ball, down he goes. Had an opportunity, but his receivers couldn't find the, the seams in the zone. And that was one of those chess matches. If a receiver could have, if he had one more step, a receiver breaks open for a big play. But he didn't, and Dante Paul got there. Keep an eye on number 21 here on the outside. There's going to be a delay of game on the play penalty. But you're going to keep an eye on here one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Tryon. That's a little bit surprising with only four seconds remaining that Fitch is staying in its base 4-4. Four -four. Uh, although a delay of game penalty is going to back the ball up to the 35-yard line. We've seen Hedicek's arm. He can reach the end zone no problem from this distance. And Fitch is staying in its base 4-4. They've got, got his guy down here in single coverage case. Yep. The, the Evan Tryon is one-on-one -on -one with Isaiah Sebastian. We're going to get a timeout Fitch. And I think that might be what they want to discuss, that they don't want to have that matchup. No, I mean, it's a matchup which, you know, Hedicek and the East Line Vikings have picked on a time or two in his first half. And he had a big play last time out. And like, get some help over there. Drop some safeties back. Get out of that one-on-one. -on -one, bring the linebackers back into coverage. Well, there's no point in playing a 4-4 four -four with four seconds remaining no. in the in half. The only thing that they have to worry about is, is the ball being thrown into the end zone. They need to play, if they're going to play a 4-4, then the linebackers have to be at the 15-yard line. Sure. And all the defensive backs have to be down near the goal line. They don't care about letting the, the ball get up in the air. They just got to knock it down. Right. Now, one-on-one -on -one coverage for Tryon. He showed he can handle that on the edge. So, uh, trying to mix things up for Coach Ellis here on defense. I mean, I, Isaiah Sebastian did a great job defending Tryon. He was right there with him step for step. But... Tryon went up and took the ball away. I mean, that's just that's just a receiver the playmaker, making Casey. a play. That's the right. Playmaker. So let's see what Fitch does differently this time as they come up to the line. East line with one last play here in the first half tied up. They again send Tryon, but this time Sebastian's are playing way off of him, and he's going to have a little help in the slot. Head a check from the shotgun. Head a check. Pressured. Steps up. Does not get a good throw off, and it's going to be complete to number 21, Evan Tryon, but that's going to do, uh, excuse me, to number 81, Liam McCarthy, but that is going to be the end of the first half. So at the end of the first half, your score, East Lime 7, the Falcons 7, you're listening to Game Day, live on theday.com. We're getting ready for the MJ Sullivan Halftime Show. MJ Sullivan, along with the Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut, and Lawrence and Memorial Hospitals are all sponsors of tonight's football game between the East Lion Vikings and the Fitch Falcons. We're going to turn it over to Keith O'Brien. Keith is going to have some scoring updates from games around the area as well as the stats of the first half and 
a special interview with a interesting guest from the Cotton Bowl era Boston College Eagles, teammate of Doug Flutie, and I'm going to turn it over to Keith O'Brien. Yeah, halftime Casey here at East Lime High School, 7-7, Fitch Falcons and East Lime Vikings. Checking out scores around the league, Griswold 14-8 right now at about halftime. Uh, they lead Wyndham, Griswold 14, Wyndham 8. The Ledger Colonels, Casey, we saw them last week, 30 to nothing so far in the first half at Stonington. The NFA Wildcats in a dogfight right down the road lead the Waterford Lancers 7-3 to towards the end of the second quarter. Those are your scores from around the league. Tomorrow at Bacon Academy, the New London Whalers take on the Bacon Bobcats, and it which should be a very, very interesting ball game tomorrow afternoon. I will be there with Mike tomorrow. We will check that game out as well. Some quick stats real quick. Passing for the Vikings, uh, four out of nine so far for 97 yards for Hedicek, throwing a nice deep ball. The uh, rushing totals, 21 carries for 50 yards. And the Falcons, Rob Duncan, three out of six for 31 yards. And rushing so far, 16 carries for 86 yards for the Falcons with Gibson leading the way with 51 yards. So pretty evenly balanced on both sides of the ball. Two turnovers for Fitch have proved costly early going into this game. I will welcome in now my halftime guest. and we've he's A man who needs no introduction. No. He needs none. He is Kevin Sullivan. Kevin, uh, thanks for coming in on game day. Um, love to be here. Yeah, yeah, listen. So real quick, let's get some information on your way. I mean, you were... You played for Boston College uh, back in the 83 Flutie season when, you know, BC went down to Miami. Yep, talking about being at the right place at the right time. I guess that's true in life. Now, where did you play high school ball? Long Island, uh, Hop Hog. Hop Hog, Long Island. And how did you venture to get into Boston College? Where, where did you, how did your football come It's a nice Irish you? Catholic school. I'm a uh, 100% Irish. Kevin Sullivan, I had no Keith choice, O'Brien. Really. Kevin Patrick Sullivan. Keith Patrick O'Brien. I mean, geez, we got to nice. be related somehow. Right. Here All right, so you ended up playing ball at BC, and you played in this uh, defensive backfield. That's correct. Uh, I, I walked on as a, uh, uh, as a freshman, um, earned my way into a scholarship. Most of my time came on special teams, goal line defense, uh, dime nickel. And, you know, when you think about that, I mean, I was a young kid back in 83, but I remember where I was watching that game. And, you know, obviously that was Flutie's Heisman year. Um, did that game, in your opinion, win Flutie the Heisman? Everyone thinks the miracle in Miami won it. Um, everyone forgets early in the season down the Legion Field with down uh, 31-14 at half. Against Alabama. Against Alabama, Legion Field. He comes back and wins that. Uh, everyone forgets the Clemson game against William Perry. Uh, I think it was like a third or fourth game. Um, come out and we smoked them. Right. But, yes, that's what everyone remembers. Uh, good story about that particular game. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving. Sure. Uh, the band, the coaches' wives, everyone's on the 737 going on the way down to Miami. We're going there, and we, everyone knows what the game was all about. Right. Thereafter, we take the, uh, the, the, the 737 back, and everyone is just having a good time. We get to Logan, and it's just literally single file all the way out from the gate to uh, what's the, pick up. What's the mood on the sideline? What's the mood of the, of the team before that play? I mean, was it something that, you know, guys were hanging their heads a little no, bit? No, no. Or we got one more shot here. We got Flutie. We can make a play. No, that's that's the thing about that guy, Doug Flutie. Uh, and he instilled it in us is you never really felt you were ever out of the game. Right. Ever. And, you know, it's funny when uh, you even playing in the backyard, if you've got a guy, and we all know those guys. Sure, yeah. Uh, that he's, if he's on your team, you never feel like you're ever out of the game. And, uh, and that's what Doug was about. Now, the coach back then was Jack McDonnell, was he not? Yes, Jack. And uh, I think uh, the way those guys uh, intermingled uh, was just a perfect uh, perfect storm. Those guys were uh, on the same page. Right. So then with Boston College that year, you guys traveled down and played in the Cotton Bowl that year in Dallas. Yeah, we played Houston. Um, had a pretty good game against them. We beat them 45-28. Um, but it was the whole season uh, of, of competition that's got us in. That's why when I look out of here uh, 
at, the, at these high school games, it, it's a building block. Get one under your belt. Take it to the next level. And, and, and that's what you know, that's what we did that particular season. Hey, you've got a couple of schools here, like you said. You know, you've got Fitch, who you know, hasn't won in 13 games. You've got East Lyme with a young core of players. You know, Fitch looking to get back something, just to sniff to move that program in the right direction. Um, how important will it be for either one of these two teams to win tonight? I think it's going to be significantly important. Um, I've seen uh, a couple of things that I'd like to hope that the coaches are addressing, and one of them is our ability to field punts sure. and not lose the 10 or 15 yards. You know, get the fair catch in traffic. Uh, but well, you've seen Fitch flip field position a couple times, you know, because of, like you said, the ball bounces, it takes a Fitch bounce, and it costs East Lime 25 yards. Here, here. Yes. Right, I mean, so how much have you seen, you know, high school football, and, and you were on the field, you were an official for many years. What right, are some of right. the changes that you've seen, you know, in high school football, say, in the last 10 or 15 years? I think the uh, um, emphasis on uh, conditioning, strength, um, I think just overall in the last 30 years, that that's what the main thing that I've seen. The uh, speed of the game has certainly gotten a lot faster. Yeah. Uh, kids seem a little more athletic out there as well. Yes, I would suggest, uh, you know, just from experience, that if there's any way that uh, they can put more emphasis on speed, agility, um, you know, you look at myself, I'm 180 pounds. I don't, I'm not a big guy, but I had some speed. Right. Pressure. When do you start learning the basics of, of the game? I mean, at, at what age? Is it, you know, is it peewees? Is it micros? Is, is it seven or eight, nine years old? I mean, when should a young man start, develop, or a young boy, you know, when do you start picking up the game? And, you know, at what age? Uh, after I got out of officiating, I went down to the East Line Youth uh, uh, level and, and coached for five or six years. I would say that uh, in uh, your fifth grade, you can really start, you know, get inside the numbers. And it's all dependent on the type of coach that you have. Right. Someone that's been there, done that. You know, a lot of times uh, you're not getting that because some people got to work for a living. Well, this is true. I, mean, I also think that coaching on that youth level is very, very important. I mean, because some of these youngsters, whether they're fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, very impressionable. And you could pick up some good habits or you could pick up some bad habits. Like back in the, uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s with the Fitch program, you always saw a group of kids down at Pequannock Bridge. You saw 50, 60, 70 youth kids who all wanted to be part of the Fitch High School program. So I think it starts at a young, young age. Yeah, uh, enthusiasm is contagious, uh, as my dad used to say. Um, and when kids see that you're having fun and, and having success, they're going to get involved. Yeah, I mean, so this is this is great. Uh, the league in general this year, obviously, uh, you know, NFA seems to be, you know, strong. Uh, Ledger seems to be strong. And you've got a couple of schools here, uh, whether it's East Lyme, whether it's Fitch, whether it's Montville, whether it's Waterford or Stonington. New London, all vying for that next tier uh, in this league. So the next few weeks, and especially game, you know, East Lyme, I believe they play uh, NFA. NFA next week. So, next you know, week. for them to, you know, get to one and one, you know, before they tackle a big boy, and a win tonight for East Lyme would probably be, you know, a huge confidence builder going into that game. I would agree 100% with you. All right, so what are you up to these days? I'm still coaching. Um, I have a daughter. Um, Heavily involved in um, the East Lyme youth basketball, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not doing football, basketball, bas baseball, football, basketball, baseball right. now. Right. You know, you know, I'm doing, you know, girls, youth basketball. My son's at uh, at Bryant now, so you know, not involved in coaching him anymore. So your, I mean, your sporting career is taking you full circle. You mean you played, you played down on, you know, at BC. You were involved in some, some great games and a great season. You're on the field as a yeah, as a ref, uh, oh, you've yeah. coached a little bit. I mean, is there any part of you that's never going to be not involved in no, some sort of a, sports or coaching? I don't have any uh, stake in this uh, game as far as anyone no, involved, I but I come down here and I like to mix it up still. I, you know, Whitey Whitehouse over there. Sure. You know, and then Mike tomorrow. Uh, you know, Mike's been always very pleasant uh, when my kids were born. He put a nice little note in the. Uh, yeah, sure. You know, so, and I just like to come down and, uh, and mix it up and support East Lame uh, football. You still keep an eye on the Eagles? 
Yeah. In fact, I might be cutting out of here pretty soon to go catch the uh, the Boston College FSU game. The Florida game. State game. Listen. Coach adazio has got those guys uh, ready to play. Yeah, and they got Marcus Allo from NFA playing for them, too. Yeah, I went up there and saw a few games, and uh, he, he performed very well. Yeah. All right, listen, Kevin, listen, thanks a lot for coming in. We appreciate a few minutes here on game day, halftime, and maybe we'll see you out down the road here at the, uh, at the stadium. It was my pleasure, and thank you very much for having me. All right, Kevin Sullivan, he's a former Boston College football player who was involved in, you know, in a lot of those games, you know, back in the, in the early 80s and then part of that whole Heisman Trophy season. And there's some big-time college football being played this weekend. We talked about the BC game tonight against Florida State. Marcus Outlow from NFA playing for the Eagles uh, at tailback tonight. There's players all over college football from the ECC. A couple of the big games this weekend that I know I will keep an eye on, Casey, is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish with their freshman quarterback tomorrow taking on the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech and their triple option. And uh, a lot of, I mean, if you're a football fan and if you're a sports fan in general, this is the best time of year. You've got high school football, You've got college football. You know, I can get into the NFL and stuff like that. I can talk about this stuff forever. But this is it. I mean, the baseball playoffs are coming into full swing. But it is a tremendous, tremendous time of year. I mean, there's a huge game on Sunday as well between the Bills and the Patriots. So, I mean, if you're a sports fan, listen. Listen to game day on a Friday night. Check out the coverage on Tuesdays and just Ride the wave all season long with game day, the day.com, the new London day. We will keep you up to speed on anything. Case, uh, let's let's talk about the national scene real quick, then we'll get into the game. Uh, Notre Dame tomorrow, Georgia Tech. I thought prior to Malik Zaire being injured that this was going to be a game that Notre Dame struggled with. They've struggled with teams like Georgia Tech, specifically Georgia Tech. And I thought going in that this was going to be a game that they would lose in a very close fashion, that they would then run the table for a number of games, and I thought they would be heading into the tail end of their season with this one loss. Now I wonder if the sort of attention that's being switched off of, you know, off of their, uh, and everything's been talking about the freshman quarterback and how well he can play, and uh, they've had to strip down the offense a little bit for him, and so he's more of uh, he's a big kid, but he's more, uh, you know, Zaire was more of a running threat. This kid is going to be throwing the ball a little bit more. They've already lost, uh, you He'll know, starting, starting tailback, tailback is out. So, I, you know, Notre Dame likes that uh, that underdog placement. So I, I think that, uh, I think Georgia Tech wins tomorrow, but I think Notre Dame plays uh, very well and can maintain for the rest of the year. I mean, the Irish play that ACC schedule this year. So they play Clemson, who looked pretty good last night against Louisville. So there's some tough games coming up. For the Irish, how about in the NFL side? Uh, the big game this weekend, obviously, um, outside of Dallas and maybe Philly, um, we're going to see just what the Buffalo Bills are made out of here early going. I think this is a really. Uh, I've heard more people pick the Bills to beat the Patriots uh, Sunday. Than I don't I, see it. Than I've than I I thought I would hear, and I get it. Rex Ryan had a great run of success uh, as the Jets head coach against the Patriots. Everyone thinks that that Rex will have a game plan. He's probably got better players in Buffalo on defense than he had for some of those teams in New York. But uh, I don't see it on the other side of the ball just yet. I, 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 I think that uh, Tyrod Taylor is going to be a, a fine quarterback, but ah. Bill Belichick has made a, a career off of just gobbling up uh, new, young, and experienced quarterbacks. Uh, Percy Harvin and Sammy Watkins are great weapons, but – uh, one, Shady McCoy is nicked up. And he is nicked up. And the thing that Belichick has always done well, uh, his best talent as a, as a defensive coordinator, was to pick one thing that the opponent does very well and take it away. And they will take away McCoy. They will not let McCoy or Williams, the backup, uh, they will not let them be a factor in this game. They're going to make Taylor beat them uh, with the routes that he's uncomfortable with. Now, three years ago, the uh, offensive coordinator – that of the Bills beat the, came in and beat the Patriots when he was the offensive coordinator. Uh, gonna, I'm going to forget where he was from. But I promise you that Belichick will have watched that game over and over to no tendencies of what's going to happen. Nah, so a big weekend coming up on the national scene with all the college football, all the NFL stuff. I mean, more football than they can handle. Tomorrow uh, afternoon at Bacon Academy, New London plays at Bacon. They will wrap up the league in the ECC. 
Uh, Casey, good ball game here tonight. It was a crisp start to the game. Um, Fitch started to show some ugliness. A couple penalties, a couple turnovers. Uh, East Lime and an inability to pick up a short fourth and one situation kind of hurt themselves. But right now, coming out of the locker room, it's an even game. And I got to think that both teams feel good about their chances right now. Yeah, the first quarter was very fast, very cr crisp. Very crisp yeah. yeah, the second quarter featured turnovers and penalties and uh, teams going backwards. It was a very uh, rough second quarter. So, which team's going to show up here in the third quarter? I think Fitch, defensively, Fitch probably feels pretty good about themselves. They they gave up some big plays in the passing game to East Lime, but they haven't allowed East Lime to, to, to sustain a lot of drives. And I think they probably feel good. They started to get pressure on head of check late. I think defensively he, he feels pretty good. Offensively, Fitch is their own worst enemy. They they you know they get a couple first downs and then a penalty and they turn the ball over twice. And so I, I think that that the Fitch offense will determine if they can get a touchdown. If the Fitch offense can score one touchdown and not give the ball up in their own territory like they did in the first half, I like Fitch. But you know East Lime because East Lime's uh, team has really only done what Fitch has allowed them to do. Right, and I, I kind of think that Fitch has had some success with Duncan on the edge, too, in the passing game. Um, you know, he's dropped back a few times. The, the bubble screen's not working. I mean, I personally, Casey, like Duncan on the move, whether he's uh, in the option down the line or whether he's throwing the ball on the edge. I don't like him in the pocket. Um, I like him on the edge making some plays. Uh, but you're absolutely right. You know, Fitch is, uh, you know, Fitch is a young, they're both young teams, and they're both hungry for a win. You have been listening to the MJ Sullivan Halftime Show live on the day.com, live from East Lime High School, where Casey O'Neill, Keith O'Brien, and the stat guru, the junior voice of game day, has taken up his seat in the stands to scout the two teams to give us insight. And you are about ready for second half action. Now, MJ Sullivan Hyundai, you know, with a no money down means. No money down. You can lease a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport for no money down and only $279 a month for 36 months. They'll pay your first payment. They'll pay your upfront sales tax. They'll pay your registration and dealer conveyance fees. You pay zero down and only $279 a month for a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport. Only at MJ Sullivan Hyundai, corner of Broad and Coleman Street in New London. See the entire inventory at MJSullivanAuto.com. The third quarter of tonight's game will be sponsored by Lawrence and Memorial Hospital. Now, Lawrence and Memorial Hospital has two ways for you to get expert non-emergency care with less costs and less waiting than a visit to the emergency room. At LM are two walk-in locations on Howard Street in New London, and the Stop and Shop Plaza in Stonington offer you more convenience and more services. No appointment necessary, from rashes to gashes, and routine physicals too at Lawrence and Memorial will be here for you. And coming soon, a new walk-in location opens in Waterford. That is Lawrence and Memorial Hospitals. NFA in a dogfight down the road at Waterford High School right now. They lead the Lancers 7-6, to six, Casey, and we will see both those teams down the road. NFA did not play last week, so maybe the, the week off, Waterford's got a game under their belt. They lost a heartbreaker to Wyndham last week, so when you're checking around the league a little bit, maybe NFA just a little bit rusty. Well, you know, people have said Waterford played very well last week. They had that, they had that game won until the tragic, uh, you know. 86-yard I mean, pass play. That's just un unbelievable. So Waterford had that game won, and they played very well. And getting a team like NFA before they have a chance to click, they're playing them in their first game. Everyone else got their first game jitters and their first game frustrations out. So there were a lot of people that thought tonight's game was going to be close. And what the a difference a week makes. Because next week, East Lime has to play. Is it East Lime or Fitch that has to play NFA next East Lime plays NFA East Lime has to play week, NFA yeah. next week. And it's the, the difference between what they see this week in NFA versus next week in NFA is going to be a huge difference. So, you know, Waterford gets the benefit of getting NFA having not played, and East Lime has the unfortunate uh, of having to play NFA after it's played a game. You know, if Waterford actually has a chance to pick off, you know, NFA early in the, in, in the season and, you know, NFA's first game, Waterford's second, it reminds you a little bit of the wake-up call that NFA got last year when they went up to Griswold and lost, I believe it was in the second or third game of the season. And then, you know, boy, uh, all heck broke loose up there at the, uh, the academy. And they kind of straightened things out a little bit made a run to the uh, state finals. If NFA were to lose to Waterford, that would mean that the winner of the Bacon Academy New London game tomorrow would join Ledger as the 2-0 and 
front runners of the ECC in the early going here. So that game in New, uh, in Bacon and Colchester tomorrow, which is already supposed to be a really great game because uh, Bacon can move the football. They've got a great quarterback, Sean Kelly. Yeah, that's going to be a fun game, and I will be traveling to that game with the one and only Mike tomorrow. I've been watching the game from the sidelines. You'll be, what, coaching soccer with your son? I will be coaching soccer. I'll be in Colchester at game – what time is that game tomorrow? I believe it's a – yes. It's a Noon, one, it's a 1 o'clock game. I have a, tw- a 1 I will, o'clock I game. will be coaching a 12-45 third, fourth grade soccer game. The Celtic, the undefeated 4-0 – Celtic. You like of, that as a dad, getting out there, coaching the kids and stuff like that? I love coaching the kids. Coaching your own kid is a challenge. I learned by, <laughs> by playing under, under my father. Hall your dad of, coached Hall, you? My father's a Hall of Fame baseball coach, sure. the most successful uh, Legion coach in the state of Connecticut, and he coached me in Legion, and it was agonizing and fantastic all at the same time. But coaching your kid and being coached by your father are is something that uh, – it takes a lot of work. Good football game here, Casey. As we start the second half, beautiful night at East Lime High School. The bleachers are full. Nice crowd here. Beautiful crowd for the second game of the season here at East Lime High School. 12 minutes. That's what they put on the clock to start this third period. The Fitch Falcons in the road white will kick off. Colton St. Louis to kick. And a short kick comes down at the 30-yard line taken by the East Lime up back. That's number 83, Michael Quick, and he is exactly that. Quick to the turf he goes as the coverage by the Fitch Falcons. East Lime will set up shop first and 10 not at to its be, own 38-yard line. Not to be confused with Mike Quick, the old Philadelphia Eagles wide out. And there is another Quick, there's a Brian Quick that does something. There's also Nestle Quick, which is my personal favorite of all the Quicks. No calories. There is lots of calories in the Nestle Quick, but not in press box pizza. All right, head of check. The Islam quarterback, they start in the eye. Head of check gives it to Janovic. And Janovic gets about one brought down on the play by the center of the Fitch line, led by number 14, Tyrick Scott, coming from his linebacker position. Second and eight, Islam at their own 40-yard line. Fitch playing that 4-4 base defense here to start the second half. Linebacker pursuit to the ball. Very good, as it was in the first half, Casey. Janovic sends his big weapon, Evan Tryon, split left. They are they have Bowman as the lone setback. Handoff again to Janovic. Janovic cuts it back up into the middle. So off right tackle, then cutting it back up in the middle is Ryan Janovic. He gains about five. It's going to bring up third and three. From about the 46-yard line. First two plays on defense to start second half. Fitch has crept nine men into the box and has challenged East Lime to run the football. And if East Lime back can pop that first wave, there's going to be some room out there, Casey. Keep an eye on the Falcons' defense as they will creep nine guys into the box. A lot of pressure on cornerback Isaiah Sebastian. He was beaten one-on-one deep in the first half by Evan Tryon. They are leaving him out there one-on-one. Big matchup out there, Sebastian on Tryon. Third and three for the Vikings. Pitch goes to Travis Franco. Franco with a first down and more. Breaks a tackle to the sideline. Travis Franco with a tough run reminiscent of another Franco, Franco Harris. As scripted, Franco busting through that first wave of Fitch defenders. He's got some running room. Jitterbugs to the outside. And a nice gain, Casey, on third down by the Vikings. Offensive line. Doing work up front for the Vikes. Ten and a half minutes remaining here in the third period. 7-7. Nice job that time on third down by the Vikings' Travis Franco. And they have the ball now in Fitch territory at the 38-yard line. Franco split right. Tryon split left. Play fake. Head a check down the sideline. He's looking for... Tryon, but again, on the wrong shoulder, Tryon went inside, throw was to the outside. Tryon is running the post route, which means as a wide receiver, you veer into the goal post. And Hedicek is throwing the ball to the pylon, which is not on the same side as the post, Casey. Yeah, that post was, pylon, post that's just, pylon. That's just communication. Second time. Yeah, that's just communication. You know, you see in the, in the NFL those throws to the other shoulder and, and you know, that time, you can't expect a kid who's looking one way to turn back around and get it on the other side. East Lyme likes that matchup on the outside. They like trying out there. They do. Franco split right, Tryon split left from the eye. Pitch it goes 
to Simpkins. Simpkins cuts back up the middle, and Lorenz Simpkins is all the way down towards the first down marker. We'll see the spot. It's going to be third and short for East Line. A lot of standing around by the Fitch defenders on that run. Big run up the middle. Lorenz Simpkins that time took it all the way down to the 30-yard line of Fitch, and it's going to be close, but we have a penalty against the Vikings, and that is going to negate the nice run by Lorenz Simpson and put East Lime backwards. That's the kind of thing that stalls drives. Uh, drive killers, coaches talk about this all the time. Penalties, miscues, self-inflicted miscues. It's just uh, very, very hard for a team to overcome uh, when they hurt themselves like that. It's going to bring up... That's a shame. That was a nice game, Case. Second and 15 now with the ball back to the 43-yard line of the Falcons. East line with their first possession, the first possession of the second half. 7-7's your ball game with 10 minutes remaining in the third period, live here from East Lime High School. You're listening to Game Day on the day.com. Hedicek has the power eye, Bowman and Simpkins. Hedicek, play fake, rolls, time, over the middle, and it's complete to Franco. Travis Franco at the first down marker. And a first down for the Vikings. Great time in the pocket by Hedicek. Stepped up and threw a strike to Travis Franco. Nice pitch and catch. Luke Letier on the coverage for the Falcons. Did not want to go over the back of Franco. Did not want to get a penalty flag. Hedicek throws a nice deep ball. Good for an East Line first down. First and 10 Vikings at the Fitch 22-yard line. East Lime's got a little something going. They're in the eye. Bowman and Simpkins. Tryon split left. Franco split right. Head a check. Toss to Simpkins. Ball's loose on the turf. And Simpkins wisely and smartly falls on the ball. But that's going to be a loss of eight. Big loss that time. But at least East Lime heads up on the ball. Retains possession. A momentum killer there for the East Lime offense. As they were thinking pay dirt, Casey. And that's going to bring up a challenging, challenging second and 20 for the uh, for the uh, Vikings offense. Well, we saw them convert right. just a second ago on that nice pass to Travis Franco. And I tell you, head of check when given time can certainly throw the football. And he's got weapons. Both Franco and Tryon have run down the field and been open. Feast or famine for this uh, Viking offense, Casey. Simpkins is the tailback. Bowman the fullback. Head of check. Rolls to his right, pressured, steps up, keeps it, and he's brought down as Trent Evans brings him down along with Dante Paul and wisely had a check, tucked it that time as he was looking for Franco again, but good coverage and pressure by the Fitch defense. Yeah, Paul came on a linebacker blitz. He shot through the gap, and uh, had a check had no time to set his feet, no time to throw, and a good defensive stand that time by the Falcons on uh, second down. Third and 19 from the... 34-yard line. A long way to go for East Line. Well, I think it's important that Fitch brings the pressure because uh, Hedicek has shown that he can make big throws, so it's important for them to get in the backfield, disrupt his rhythm a little bit. Franco split right, Tryon split left, Bowman is your fullback, and Simpkins, the tailback, in the eye. Flag on the play, and we're going to get what looks like to maybe be a delay of game against East Line, and it is, and that's going to make it third and 25. East Line has not only taken itself out of scoring position, field goal range, it's now taking itself to where they might consider running the ball and punting it away. Tough to be aggressive when you uh, when you make mistakes like that, Case. Third and 22, 7.40 remaining here in the third quarter, 7-7, seven, seven, Vikings and Falcons. Had a check, fakes to Simpkins. Down the sideline, looking for Tryon. Tryon coming back to the ball, and oh, incomplete at the five. Great effort by Evan Tryon. He came back to the football, had it in his hands, but Isaiah Sebastian was there to help break it up, and that's going to bring up fourth and 22, but it was there. Yeah, East Lime had the play they wanted. They liked going that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Tryon. Beautifully thrown ball by Hedicek. Just a nice play on, on both sides of the ball. Uh, Sebastian broke it up. Casey, two, it's, it's, it's a shame for East Line they got to punt the ball here because they, they were in business at the 24-yard line of Fitch. All they did was go backwards after that. Standing at midfield, East Line's going to punt it away. Back deep is Johnny Johnson for the Falcons. Snap is good. Punt is a low line drive kick that lands at the 20 and picked up 
and taken by Letta Lear at the 18 where he's dropped flags come down on the play. And we're going to see an unsportsmanlike penalty, it looks like. Fitch is going to have the football, but let's see where they have the football, depending on which way this play, uh, penalty goes. Officials are huddling at the 15-yard line. Oh, unlike last week, there's actually somebody back to receive the punts, Casey O'Neill. Unsportsmanlike penalty against... Un dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Against Fitch. That is going to back them up and put them again. The second time we have seen them on the shadow of their own goal line. Uh, Blindside block was the personal foul, and he's half the distance to the goal. Falcons was set up shop at about their own. My spotter tells me the nine-yard line, Casey O'Neill. Rule change this year in high school football, and that's what got a victimized Fitch that time. You are not allowed to hit a blindside block ever. No more crackback blocks, no more blindsides. If, a, if, the, if the opponent is not looking at you, you are not allowed to make that block. So they're taking away all the punt, kick, and crackback blocks that cause concussion syndromes, uh, and that's why that, they have taken that away. So that is a new penalty in the uh, high school ranks. Fitch fell victim to it that time. First and ten with the ball at their own nine-yard line. Parker Gibson is the lone setback. Gibson with the ball. Gibson breaks a tackle. Gibson's going to be up near the first down the uh, yard marker, all the way up to the 20-yard line. Parker Gibson on first down might have a first down for the Falcons and gets them out of the own shadow of their goal. Good job by the Fitch offensive line there. Running lane for Gibson on the left side of the center. Picked and choosed his hole, put his head down, gained the last three yards by himself. Credit the Fitch offensive line, Casey, for that play. Flag on the play. That, and it looks like Fitch is backing up yet again. He was nice run by Gibson behind big 77 Kevin Barardi, but holding. It's going to be brought back, and now Fitch is going backwards. There's that's, only so far they can go. That's why the Fitch offensive line did a nice job on that play, I guess. That's where the hole, that's why there was such a big hole. It's actually going to be an illegal procedure penalty. Right. We got a little bit too quick to off the ball. That's going to bring up first and 15 from their own five yard line. So. Unfortunately, not only did they not receive the 10 yards, they go backwards five. Casey, this, this is a tale of the same game for two different teams. One step forward, two steps back. East Lime has a good drive. They shoot themselves in the foot. Fitch is a big game. They shoot themselves in the foot. Duncan hands off again to Gibson and nowhere to go that time. Parker Gibson stood up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. And that's going to bring up second and long. You know, this is almost like a replay of the first half. I said at halftime that I liked Fitch if they didn't do this. If they didn't have to deal with the ball in their, you know, on their own goal line. And if they didn't have to play defense in the, in deep in territory. But this is an impossible hold uh, They're out. operating in danger zone territories what they are, especially with a young cornerback like Duncan. This is a, a, a position in the field, Casey, where a mistake, this handoff, a fumble, um, they can't endure another penalty. It, it really hurt. You have no margin for error right now if you're the Falcons. Six minutes remaining, third period, tied at seven. But Fitch, second and long, in its own end zone, rolls Duncan. Duncan with time, throws a bullet out to Letelier, but it is incomplete and a flag on the play. With 5.55 remaining here in the third period, flag on the play. Incomplete pass, Duncan looking for Letelier. Ineligible receiver. And another penalty against the Fitch Falcons. It's going to back them up. As, you know, they can only go so much farther as they are already down on their own five-yard line. This will take it to the two-and-a-half-yard line. Yeah, seven penalties now for the Fitch Falcons, and it's I guess it's pretty common when you have a team like this who is struggling a little bit. And, you know, good football teams don't make mistakes like this. Young football teams who are trying to win make mistakes like this, Casey. This is one of those times where, like, the Patriots would have Brady punt it right out of his own end zone. Why would you bring up the Patriots? They would never be in a position this. Because they're the only team that would have their quarterback punt it from their own end zone. Brett Favre is no longer playing. All right, Fitch, third and 15 from their own two-and-a-half-yard line. Handoff goes to Parker. And a nice run. No, that time it was to Johnson. Johnny Johnston all the way up towards the first down marker. A nice play by Johnny Johnston. Fitch, it's so difficult sometimes with the multiple motion uh, out of that flex bone offense and Johnny Johnson gets 
the requisite yardage for a Fitch first down all the way up to the 22. Huge hole again on the left side of the line for the Falcons. The offensive line doing work up front. Big roll. Casey, you and I could have ran through that hole. Again, big Kevin Berardi, number 77, provided the hole. Duncan hands the ball up the middle. It goes to Parker Stevens. Nothing there that time. Should be Parker Gibson. Parker Stevens, of course, the great actor of the 80s. Starred in at 1 Adam 12 in The Love Boat. Second and 10. Is he Falcons. one of the Hardy Boys, too? He might Is have he one been, of the Hardy Boys? He, at one time, he might have been one of the Hardy Boys. I'll get some more trivia for you as you enter the fourth quarter. I will stump you. Okay. That's I will get you. You can stump me. 22-yard line. Five minutes remaining here in the third period. 7-7 seven, seven your score. Falcons with the ball. Second and 10. Cam Albin is your split left. Letelier is the split right. In motion, Johnson. Pitch goes to Johnson. And Johnson hit in the backfield. Reverses his field. And nowhere to go. And he's brought down by Travis Franco. That time, the Falcons went nowhere. East Slime made a great play. Stood up Johnson. He tried to reverse field. Franco cleaned them up. And they are right back where they started from. Third and 22 from their own 10. Yeah, East Lime defense pinning their ears back that time on second down. Huge, huge loss on the play. And I'd like to see what kind of a play uh, Coach Ellis has got in his playbook for third and 22. From his own nine-yard line, too. Four minutes and 10 seconds remaining. And right now, Fitch is just trying to figure out how to not have a disastrous result from this. Last time, Johnson got him the big run, but this time Johnson... Got stopped for a huge loss. Timeout on the field by the Falcons. They're going to discuss what's going on. You're listening to Game Day live on the day.com. Of course, your third period brought to you by Lawrence and Memorial Hospital. Now, Lawrence and Memorial has two ways for you to get expert, non-emergency care with less cost and less waiting than a visit to the emergency room. See, now at Lawrence and Memorial, you got two walk-in locations on Howard Street in New London and the Stop and Shop Plaza in Stonington, and they offer you more convenience and more services. And no appointment is necessary. Here's the line that I like, Keith. From rashes to gashes and routine physicals, too, at Lawrence and Memorial, we're here for you. And coming soon, a new walk-in in Waterford. So Lawrence and Memorial Hospital is your sponsor for the third period on game day. Casey, with four minutes left to go here in the third quarter, too, I get the feel, I get the sense that whoever makes the big mistake or whoever team can capitalize on the other team's big mistake will win the game. I have a feeling that it's going to be a, a, a pick, a, a fumble, something, a block, punt, something along those lines is going to register, and the other team will capitalize from it. Well, let's see what Fitch comes up with on third and 20 from its own nine-yard line. Duncan rolls right, keeps, and tries to shuffle it out to Cleon McClish. No good, but nothing there that time. And now the Falcons will have to punt from their own end zone. And Robert Duncan, though he is a very good athlete, is not a punter by trade. So East Lime should have exceptionally good position. They send Alath Gaiaba back, and he stands at his own 40-yard line. So great field position will be coming for the Vikings. Good snap. Kick is off. Almost blocked. Spiraling. Bounces at the 30 and takes a neutral bounce, and Fitch will down it. So the ball, East Lime will have it at the Fitch 30-yard line. So East Lime almost in scoring position off the drop. First and 10, Vikings in great position with 3.44 remaining here in the third period in this tie ball game. Hey, Duncan, it was 3 for 6 passing for 31 yards in the game. Kind of struggled a little bit from the quarterback position. And like you said, East Lime has now flipped field position due to the defensive stand and Fitch imploding with their own penalties. East Lime in a real good spot here to take control of this third quarter. Franco split right. Tryon split left. Bowman the fullback. And Janovic is the tailback. Handoff goes to Janovic. Janovic off right tackle. Driving forward. Moving Fitch bodies. Ryan Janovic with a tough run on first down. Workman-like. Blue collar. Take the hard hat off, Ryan. Second and seven with 3.30 remaining here in the third. Hodgkinson was in on the tackle for Fitch, but a manageable second down, second and a short six. These are the down and distances that make it very easy for a coach to call plays, Casey. Second and six, second and five. 
brings up, you know, very, very easy to call plays from this down distance. Hedichik has his eye behind him. Pitch goes to Janovic. Janovic, nothing there. Breaks a tackle, but can't break the remaining three. Trent Evans, along with Fresco Stevens, and number 14, Tyrick Scott for the Falcons. Get Janovic for a gain of nothing, perhaps even a loss of a yard. It's going to bring up third and seven from the 26-yard line. Big play in this ball game here for the East Lime offense. These East Lime running backs are better off and more suited to run north and south than they are east-west. Whenever it seems to be a play to bounce to the outside, Fitch is quick enough, Casey, to string the play out defensively. East-west uh, is no good for the north-south running Vikings. Well, credit Ben Guzman and Fresco Stevens, the two tackles for Fitch for plugging up the middle. East Lime's going to call a timeout. Third and eight. Ball at the Fitch 22-yard line. 2.17 remaining here in the third period. Seven for the Vikings. Seven for the Falcons. You are listening to Game Day on the day.com. Casey O'Neill along with Keith O'Brien and the stat guru. The junior voice of Game Day is floating around and... We are at East Lime High School. Now, remember, folks, you're listening to us live audio only right now, but on Tuesday morning when the top ten high school teams in the state are announced, you can go to theday.com and through the wizardry and magic of the genius, Peter Wappy, you will see an NFL Films quality highlight package. The coaches are mic'd. The highlights are put together in a way that really brings forth the atmosphere of high school football. If you haven't checked out, the Ledger High School Cranston East game of last week. Please do. It come, comes across brilliant. We expect on Tuesday that the highlights of this game will also come across as brilliant, in part because we have a very close 7 7 ball game. 2 17 remaining. Third and eight, East Line. Evan Tryon, the big play machine for the Vikings, is split right. Multiple backs. Bowman is the main set. Head a check. Instead, Pitches to Franco. Franco wants to throw, but instead he's going to hold on to it. And from the backside, the ball's on the turf. It's loose. And the Falcons have recovered. That was a total halfback option look the entire way. Uh, Tryon was covered. Fitch pressure. Defense stepping up and making a big play here for the Falcons, Casey. Dante Paul, number 10, has been in the backfield all night long. He pursued Franco, stripped Franco, and the Falcons recovered. What a big play for the Falcon defense. Gets the ball now, does the Falcon offense, all the way up at their own 34-yard line. A little trickery for the Vikings, backfiring in that time, and a uh, huge, huge play by the Falcons defense. Duncan. Quick throw, it goes to Letelier. Letelier breaks a tackle. Letelier breaks another tackle. It's a foot race down the sidelines. Letelier to 20, cuts back at the 10, 5, and they're going to say he was out of bounds. And the bubble screen finally works for the Fitch Falcons, Casey. And an unhappy East Lime coaching staff up on the roof of our press box, as we heard. So <laughs> I did. It was Bigfoot up there. From so there Sasquatch, Sasquatch up there. Sasquatch on the roof. But instead... It was a big, uh, quick little screen to uh, the wide out Luke Letelier. We They've been trying it all night, and he finally broke it. They finally connected with Duncan, taking advantage of the speed on the outside for the Falcons' wide receivers. First and ten. Pitch goes to Sebastian. Sebastian cuts it, gets the seam. Sebastian's in the clear and dragged down by Dalton Franco. Falcons starting to show their speed, Casey O'Neill. Huge pitch and catch on the outside in the previous play. And Sebastian turning on the Jets as he hits the line of scrimmage. Big gain for the Falcons as they set up shop at the 14-yard line of the Vikings. First and 10 for Fal the Falcons. Nice run by Isaiah Sebastian, and only Dalton Franco saved the, the touchdown. Look at the swagger that Fitch takes the offensive line with. Duncan, screen again to Letelier. Letelier trying to break a tackle and can't do it that time. Nice pursuit out on the sideline. Number 21, Evan Tryon saving a big play out there. Great job that time by the East Lime defense, bringing up a second and six, but they want to get Letelier in the open. Yeah, they like the speed on the outside. Letelier, Sebastian, you know, uh, get the legs moving. and They like the one-on-one -on -one matchups with the Vikings, Casey. Fitch with a very, very persistent pace on offense. Duncan, 
Hands the ball off up the middle. Keeps it himself. No, it's a pay play fake. Nothing there. Duncan to the sideline. All the way down to the first, but down marker. A little read option that time by Robert Duncan. He kept it. Did a great job of pulling it out of the fullback's belly and got it all the way down to the first down Yeah, marker. we've seen speed kills the last three plays, and Duncan showed his speed there. Speed got him out of a little bit of trouble. He turned something out of nothing, Casey, on the right-hand side. Fitch offense moving with a with a vindiction on this drive. I'm not sure that's an actual word, but I know the purpose behind it. Purpose. That's what I was looking for. They have Fitch offense moving Con convic with a purpose. With conviction. Conviction. Vindiction? I, I, I'm not sure. Benediction if they, were, if they were Catholic. Contradiction if they were opposite. Flag on the play. We're going to put a stop to it all. You know, that's the great thing about game day, folks. Not only can you learn about football, you can learn about grammar here on game day because we bring you a little bit of it all. We're going to have a penalty, and it's going to bring up a first down, first and goal, I believe, for the Falcons Offsides now. Offsides by the Vikings defense. All the way down now. It looks like the ball is on the four-yard line. First and goal, Fitch. On the four-yard line, 52 seconds remaining here in the third period. The Falcons trying to get on the board and break a 7-7 tie. Duncan rolls, shovel pass, and nothing there. Nice job by the center of the East Lime line. A little misdirection there, inside handoff by Duncan, trying to catch East Lime over, pursuing uh, that big people stayed at home up front for the Vikings there, and nobody was fooled on that play. And Casey, and you remember in the first half, that was the play that Fitch fumbled the ball on as well. So uh, be careful down there, Mr. Duncan. Duncan quickly, quarterback sneak. He's all the way in looking for a signal. Touchdown, Falcons! Robert Duncan on the quarterback keeper. And with 17 seconds remaining in the third period, the Falcons go on top. 13-7. to seven. Speed kills and big plays led the Fitch Falcons down the field. They cash in, hit pay dirt, Casey, at the end of the third quarter here, nearing the end of the third quarter. Duncan said, enough of this. Let me do it myself. There won't be any fumbles. There won't be any problems. And now we've got the swinging gate wildcat. Polecat. Polecat. Mountain Lion, Criss Cross, Dipsy Doo, Dunkaroo. But Colton St. Louis is going to get a good snap, a good spot. And a good extra point. And with 17 seconds remaining here in the third period, your Fitch Falcons have gone back on top by a touchdown, 14-7. Now, I stand corrected, Casey. I thought a mistake would win this game, but the Fitch offense came out. That particular drive had a big play on the outside to let Lear. Some nifty running by Sebastian. And speed was the story of that drive for the Falcons, Casey. And they didn't hurt themselves. There was no bad penalties. Uh, they got the matchups they wanted on the outside, and they kind of exposed that East Lime defense. But it did happen off of a mistake because it was the Vikings going to the trick play, the oh, yeah. trying to yeah. run the, 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 the halfback toss yeah. where, where Travis Franco was stripped by Dante Paul, and it was that turnover that took the Vikings, who were in scoring position, and the Fitch defense, which was on its heels, sure. and completely flipped it around. Then the big play to let Lear sets up the score. But, you're, but you had it right. It was a mistake by the East Lime offense. I'm not even sure it was a mistake as much as it was a great a play by the Fitch play, defense. Yeah. Yeah. And momentum is a fickle thing in high school football, is it not? Now that's a great line right there. It is a fickle thing it in high school football. All the momentum right now is with the Fitch Falcons, the body language from the kids, the, the offense moving with a vindiction purpose, a vindictional purpose, if I could say that. But, I mean, you know, Fitch looks alive right now, Casey O'Neill. 14-7, Falcons on top. Back deep for the Vikings, a slew of Vikings as they are awaiting the kick of Colton St. Louis from the from the Falcons. Ball spotted at the 40-yard line. So East Line will have it to start the fourth quarter, and they're going to trail by a touchdown. So we will see if they can put something together on offense. All of the momentum on the side of the Fitch Falcons. Colton St. Louis with the kick. A great driving kick all the way back to the five-yard line. Return up the middle and nothing there. They're going to start at their own 25-yard line is East Lime. 25-yard line, first and 10, 10 seconds remaining in the third period. 14-7 Falcons. 
You are listening to Game Day live on theday.com. Game Day brought to you by MJ Sullivan Automotive Corner, the Science and Technology Magnet School of Southeastern Connecticut, and Lawrence and Memorial Hospitals. Ten seconds remaining here in the third period. This quarter has been brought to you by Lawrence and Memorial Hospitals. East Lime sets up shop first and ten from their own 25-yard line. Head of check in the shotgun. Snap is good. Head of check's going to throw. Quick out it goes to Tryon. Nothing there. Sebastian jumps on Tryon immediately. That time, Fitch sniffed it out. It's going to bring up second and ten. A man on an island out there was Tryon, and a good defensive stop by the Fitch Falcons then the third quarter case. And that's the end of the third period. Your score at the end of three. Falcons 14, Vikings 7. Keith, what else is going on? Taking around a little peek around the league tonight. You've got NFA right down the road in Waterford. 14-13 as they end the third quarter. Lancer Nation holding strong against the Academy. Killing only 27. Uh, Plainfield 12. That game is ending the third quarter as well. Uh, you've got here you've, uh, I'm sorry, Wyndham 15-14 at the end of the third quarter. Over Griswold, 15-14. And don't forget, uh, tomorrow, Bacon is hosting New London. Oh, uh, Ledger's burying. What's that? What's, what's the score of that game? 30 to nothing. 30 to nothing. Well, what's interesting there is I want to see if the Ledger defense posts back-to-back -back shutouts. Because we were very impressed about, about how they played Cranston East last week. If they shut out Stonington, that will be... Eight consecutive shutout quarters to start the year for that Ledger defense. Yeah, I mean, it says here that Stonington used but all but 41 seconds of the third quarter opening drive, but had a field goal blocked. So they had the ball for 11 minutes and 20 seconds and came away with no points. Trying to take the air out of the ball. Fourth quarter brought to you by the MJ Sullivan Automotive Corner. East Lime, second and nine from their own 24-yard line. Dylan Hedicek, the quarterback of the Vikings, is in the shotgun. He's got Josh Bowman, the big fullback who scored the East Lime touchdown earlier in the game as his lone setback. And big play, Evan Tryon split out wide to the left. Good football game here tonight, Casey. Good spirited football game between two teams searching for some sort of identity. Both teams looking for their first win. Snap is good. Handoff in the backfield. Brought down Lorenz Simpkins with nowhere to go. Five on five. That's number five, Trent Evans, bringing down number five, Lorenz Simpkins. And East Lime going backwards now, third and 15 from their own 20. Not the down and distance that Coach Rudy Bagos wants to be in at any point in the game, never mind to start the uh, fourth quarter. You know, Coach Mike Ellis of the Falcons said he'd like to see what his team could do with a lead. That defense plays better if they can pin their ears back a little bit. He's got it right now, third and 15. Head a check. Play fake. Rolls right. Pressured. Tucks it up. And he is sacked. Initial pressure came from Dante Paul. He's been in head of checks grill the entire night. That's the fourth sack by that Falcon defense. And East Slime is going to have to punt. Head a check had number 82, Sam Hyman, tight end down the middle of the field. Couldn't quite pull the trigger on the throw, Casey. And it gave Fitch just enough time to get in the backfield and make the big sack. And the big thing that Fitch is going to get out of this position is field position once again. We've seen it all night long. One second, one step. If Dante Paul gets there, sack. If he doesn't, big play down the field that time, he got there. Johnson stands at the East Lime 45-yard line awaiting the punt. Snap is good. High end over and kick. Johnson fields it at the 47. Fair catch. And the Falcons will take over at the East Lime 47-yard line. 10-27 remaining in the game. Falcons have a 14-7 lead. Let's find out if they can manage the clock here. Up 7 with 10 minutes and 27 seconds remaining. That's gut check time right now for the Vikings. Body language tells a lot, Casey. Look down on the sidelines right now. Fitch is very spirited. Coaches are fired up. Players are fired up. They're all congratulating each other. Fitch uh, East Lime kind of looks a little whole home over there. This is a big, big time in this ball game for this East Lime defense to step up and make a play. Ledelier, who's had a nice game for the Falcons, split out to the right. And Trent Evans split out to the left. Duncan fakes the handoff. Inside it goes to Johnson. Nothing there. Johnson stacked up on the tackle that time. Patrick Dowling of the Vikings from his linebacker position. Second and ten. There's that trap misdirection play, which you do not like. 
because it's very hard for you to call those I, numbers. I got you that saw one. that one. I got that one. It's backwards to you. No luck running there against the front four of the Vikings. Down in distance, very important, Casey, in the fourth quarter. Second down and ten is still one of those, you know, down in distances that the coach doesn't want to be in. Well, East Lime right now trying to first stop, but Fitch is going to be happy to run clock, pump this thing away. They are not going to make a mistake. Duncan, shotgun, little flip out it goes to Johnson on screen. J Johnny Johnson's got a seam and breaks a tackle. First down, Falcons. An interesting play. Duncan took the shotgun snap, looked like he was going to do a handoff, and instead a little flip out to Johnny Johnson, who was technically coming out of the backfield. But Johnson, with the speed on the outside, turned it into a first down. And a great downfield block by Luke Letelier Le sprung Johnson for that play. You know, it's very, very easy to get caught for holding on the outside for a wide receiver shoot. The hands still come up in the air. Duncan, straight drop, has time, going for Letelier in the corner of the end zone. Waiting for a signal. Touchdown, Falcons! Luke Letelier on a perfect strike from Robert Duncan in the back of the end zone. And just like that, the Falcons are on top, 20-7. to seven. Oh, what a strike from Robert Duncan to Luke Letelier. Bombs away from one hand to another. Big plays in this second half, catapulting Fitch through the air, Casey. Colton St. Louis in for the extra point. Duncan in the game to... Wow. And what a pass wow. by Duncan. Duncan will hold, snap, good hold, good kick, is good. And with 9-16 remaining in the ball game, the Falcons are up two scores, 21-7 over the Vikings. Big play, Luke Letelier, 111 receiving yards so far in the game. Casey, that's back-to-back -back drives where Duncan did damage with his arm. I thought that the... Uh, Falcons were going to be perfectly content running clock and punting it away and playing field position. But that little... That tricky Coach Ellis. Well, that little screen pass to Johnson on second and long really ignited something. And he sensed, again, you said momentum is fickle. Well, he sensed his team had it. He sensed East Lime a little bit on its heels. And he said, you know what? I think East Lime probably thinks I want to run it out too. I'm going to take a shot. And he did just that. And I can't tell you what a strike that Robert Duncan threw, and Luke Letelier probably had less than a foot left in the back of the end zone, got that foot down for the touchdown. Yeah, Duncan's played well here, especially towards the end of the third quarter and the start of this fourth quarter, and the speed on the outside, the speed is really giving East Lime trouble right now. You've talked about the defense being back on the heels a little bit, but you know whether it's a running back, a screen player, a big bomb down the field, you know, Fitch's speed is starting to take over and be the storyline of this game. i to find out how many catches Letelier has. Five, five, yeah. five catches for over 100 yards. yards yeah. That's over 20 yards a catch. That's a that's big play uh, receivership right there on the hands of Luke Letelier. You know how we were able to get that stat so fast like that, pull it out of thin air? Stat guru. Stat guru to my left, and he brought pizza, which means he is the stat hero of tonight's ball game. If you want to know who the stat guru is and where the pizza came from, you got to come to East Lime High School with 9 minutes and 16 seconds remaining. You better get in your car and hurry. Colton St. Louis from his 40. Kicks a low line drive taken by East Lime at its own 20. Nothing there. Up to the 30. Ball on the turf, but they're going to say he was down. Official pointing to the ground, but that was a late. I'm going to. I have pronounced this poor child, this poor young man's name wrong all night. A late Gaiaba is the person who took the ball for East, for East Lime. They say he was down, and East Lime will take over at its own 30-yard line. Uh, it's been a long time since you've seen a Fitch Falcon sideline look that spirited and that fired up, and Fitch is just on fire right now. 9.08 remaining here in the ballgame. The Falcon defense is fired up. Let's see what the Vikings have. They send Franco wide right. Tryon is split left. Head a check under center. He's got the eye. Hand up, goes the middle to Bowman, the fullback, rumbling, stumbling, and first down. John Riggins-like. I'm going old school. Number 45, Josh Bowman, right up the gut. Back to the basics, first down, East Lime. Josh Bowman pointing at his own bench saying, give me the rock, coach. It's been a long time since I smelled it. Give me the ball and let me do some work. Casey, we haven't called. There's only his third carry in the second half. We have not called first carry this second half. We haven't called his name that much. First time. 
First and ten, Vikings at their own 42-yard line. Tryon is the lone split out to the left. Head a check. Again, hands it to Bowman. Bowman just puts his head down, but that time he ran directly into Raphael Adams, the big linebacker for the Falcons. Not much there. Second and seven. Eight and a half remaining here in the ballgame. 50, number 57, big offensive lineman lost a shoe. You ever lose a shoe in a game? I did. I've lost a shoe in both baseball and soccer. That's Andrew Brown. So that's shoeless Andrew Brown down on the field right now. It's it's not so big a deal to lose one in baseball because you can just call timeout and you know put it back on. But in soccer, you got to keep going. You know, soccer. That's, yeah, I'm not a big that fan sport of soccer, that, the sport that you, that you that you that you somehow missed the boat. It's not on. the sports doctor's repertoire. You know, it's only the most played sport in the entire yeah, world. Stop. But that's fine. Hand off to Franco. End around. Franco's got a first down to the sideline and more. Nice run by Travis Franco. He's run out of bounds at the Falcon 40-yard line. East Lime in business now in Falcon territory with just under eight minutes remaining. That short little run by Bauman spirited this East Lime offense. It's kind of waking them up a little bit. Good, good tough physical run. And now they're all fired up and into the game. The offensive line looks sharp. Franco on the outside picked up a uh, 12 yards. Casey and East Lime on the move. Franco's going to go split out wide right. Evan Tryon to the left, power eye for the Vikings. Hand off to Bowman, bounces off a tackle and gains about seven, eight yards. Nice run by Josh Bowman. He bounced off of Fresco Stevens and went all the way down to the 32-yard line where Luke Letelier finally brought him down after a nice gain. That was all Bowman. He was hit by the nose guard, the line of scrimmage case. He kept his legs moving, head down, all Josh Bowman on that play. Second and four. Tryon, split left, head a check, toss to Franco, Franco can't get to the end because Dante Paul, Dante Paul has been the defensive player of the game for the Fitch Falcons, he has been unblockable from his right end position and he got Franco back to the original line of scrimmage, the 40 yard line, it's going to bring up third and 10. Nice play, sideline to sideline at Fitch speed again, Casey. Not fooled on that play. Good pursuit by Paul, making a big-time tackle. Down in distance again. Very important in the fourth quarter. Loss on the play. Third down and, and ten for the Vikings. Under seven minutes remaining. Huge third down for East Line. They send Franco wide right and Tryon wide left. Big Josh Bowman and Lorenz Simpkins make up the eye. Head a check. Fakes it to Simpkins. Head a check's going to throw. He's got... Try on, and it's caught at the 18-yard line on an in route by Evan Tryon in front of Isaiah Sebastian. But, oh, no, it's coming back, holding on the Vikings. Oh, what a momentum killer. Oh, uh, she is fickle, is she not? Quarterback and receiver on the same page, finally on that play. And East Lime's going to have it all for now. What a nice play that time. Nice pocket protection for Hedicek. Great he, throw. He stepped up, put the ball where his receiver was going, and great reception by Tryon in front of Isaiah Sebastian. We've had that battle going on all night long, but a killer hold on the Vikings is going to bring it back and negate the big 30-yard completion from Hedicek to Tryon. Oh, just an absolute nightmare right now for the Vikings. And if I'm the Viking coaching staff, Casey, I'm going right back to try on. I'm going to go right back to him in the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I'm going to just keep riding that horse. The only problem with that, with it being third and third and a base. I don't, I don't know, yeah, third in a, in a country mile, is that you won't have time to no, get won't. it to try on before Dante Paul is on top of Hedicek. They haven't been Just, able to block him. They need to give their, their left uh, tackle some help here. Hedicek's got twip trips right. He's in the shotgun. Snap is good. There comes Paul from the blind side. Hedicek rolls out right, keeps it himself, tries to get to the sideline and cannot, and he's run out of bounds at the 47-yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down and a long 20 with 6.06 remaining. And the Fitch Falcons with a two-touchdown lead, 21-7 over the Vikings. We they said got a punt? Yeah, we said Dante Paul was going to be there. He was. He got him. They rolled away from the pressure. They knew Paul would be there, so they rolled away.
but nothing to the strong side. They had trip receivers out there, nothing doing. Yeah, I was looking for some sort of play selection there for East Lime to get, you know, maybe a chunk of yards there, not everything, and possibly go for it, you know, on fourth down, but not the case. Letelier back for the Falcons. He calls for fair catch and makes it at the 25-yard line. So Fitch will take over first and 10 from its own 25-yard line. Six minutes on the dot remaining here in the ballgame. Well, if momentum is fickle, Casey, the clock is the Fitch Falcons' friend right now. Six minutes to go, total control of this game right now. Uh, you know what? Keep the, the game in Duncan's hands. You know, nothing crazy here down the stretch. And let's see if Fitch can actually execute and close the game out. Very important time of the game for a young program like Fitch who's trying to get their first win in 13 games, Casey. It would surprise me if Fitch put the ball in the air right here. Let's see. He's got Parker Gibson as his fullback. Handoff straight up the middle. It goes to Gibson. Gibson all the way down to the first down marker at the 36-yard line. That's going to be close to a first down. Great first down run that time by Parker Gibson. The Falcons are in business right off the shoot. I mean, a part of the game right now and a time of the game where you know, the coaching staff and Coach Ellis can go to his offensive line and say, you guys can win the game for us right now. We've got an injured Falcon on the field. That's Cam Albin. While the trainers attend to him, we will tell you that the fourth quarter is brought to you by M.J. Sullivan Automotive Corner. Now, M.J. Sullivan Hyundai, where no money down actually means no money down. Now, you can lease, listen to this deal now, you can lease a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport for no money down and only two seventy nine a month for 36 months. I think the stat guru can afford that. They will pay your first payment, stat guru. They will pay your upfront sales tax, and they will pay your registration and dealer conveyance fees. You pay zero down and only two seventy nine a month for a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Sport only at MJ Sullivan in Hyundai Corner on Broad and Coleman in New London. You can see their entire inventory, stat guru. If you're not interested in that particular car you can see it all at mjsullivanauto.com ledger 37 nothing win at stonington back-to-back -back shutouts in the ecc for the colonels jawan johnson huge a run for the nfa wildcats as they extend their lead in the fourth quarter against the waterford lancers run up the road yeah casey some you know, 20 to 13 right now nfa with about four minutes left to go in that game and a couple of real good ball games here around the league obviously one up at nfa uh, and one here tonight on the day.com you know very very Good game with Fitch making some plays here in the fourth quarter. You know, it's nice when you have, have NFA has a luxury of their quarterback being an all-state sprinter. Nice. You, you give him an, you give him any any room at all. A fine young player. And he's gone. All right, first and ten Falcons from their own 35-yard line. Duncan, handoff up the middle again. It goes, but now he keeps it. Flag on the play. Duncan is in the scene. Duncan's going to get another flag. This possibly cannot possibly stand, but Duncan is heading for the end zone. Touchdown. Falcons, but with multiple flags on the field, yeah. I can't imagine that this thing is going to hold up. Now follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow flags down the field. One at the 45, one at the 37. There's uh, connect the dots out there with penalty flags. A couple of holds on a couple of different occasions by the Falcons. I got to tell you that Robert Duncan did an amazing job that time on the read option because he had the ball in Parker Gibson's stomach. You think you out. I called Parker Gibson's number. Next thing I know, Duncan's breaking into the clear. It was a great job of misdirection. Holding. Holding that time is the call. That's not a surprise, and it's going to back the Falcons up. But with five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the ball game, the Falcons are still in excellent shape, up 21-7, to seven, because the clock is the Falcons' friend, and East Lime has to get the ball back and score twice. We're going to have first and 20 for Fitch. Ball back to the 26-yard line. That's where they started this drive originally. You're listening to Game Day on the day.com. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, the stat guru mulling his Hyundai options to my left, and the junior voice of Game Day <laughs> looking at that box of pizza wondering if... I do not drive a Hyundai. I probably should endorse it, though. I will get a Hyundai. Duncan. Hands off to Johnson. Johnson, nothing there. Nice job by East Lime. They slam John Johnson as soon as he gets to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be no gain. Second and 20 for the Falcons, but the clock is ticking almost down to five minutes now. Casey, this is the process of winning a football game. This is the process of closing out a football game for a team that hasn't won 
in a very long time. So very important for these next you know three or four minutes of this game where Fitch stays in control, does not hurt themselves with penalties or turnovers or, or things along those lines. This is winning time. 13 straight losses for those Fitch Falcons. They are attempting to right that. Handoff out of the shotgun. It goes to Parker Gibson, but nothing there. Eastline doing its part, holding the Falcons now. It's going to bring up third and 22, but only four minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the ballgame. 21-7 Falcons, 4.30 remaining. Timeout on the field. Timeout East Lime. They are looking to stop the clock. We are in the fourth quarter here on game day, live on the day.com. Casey O'Neill, Keith O'Brien, and I think and, uh, the East Lime Vikings are just trying to stop the clock so they can get the ball back with as much time as possible. Yeah, I think it would be safe to say right now with third and, and 18 to 19 to go, I don't think Fitch will be throwing the ball here. No. I think the, the clock is their friend. Uh, whether they run the ball, take another 25 seconds off it, force East Lime to call timeouts, uh, they have to do what they have to do to keep the clock moving. They have a two-score lead right now. It's all about game management and clock management and not making mistakes is how Fitch is going to close this game out. 4.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. East Lyon will try to do what they can on defense to, to stop the Falcons, get the ball back, and you know rely on the big play ability they have with Tryon on the outside. So... That's what the Falcons, uh, that's what the Vikings are trying to do. And the Fitch Falcons take the line of scrimmage, Casey. Duncan under center. Thank you very much, Keith. Duncan, straight drop. He is going to throw over the middle. He's got a man. Cleon McClish. McClish breaks it to the outside. McClish all the way inside the 20. Still on his feet. Cleon McClish down to the two-yard line. Wow. No wow. one saw that one coming. Cleon McClish. I stand corrected, Casey. Fitz going for the jugular to win this ball game. Huge play by Duncan. Big pitch and catch. And the fat lady could be singing here at East Lime High School. What a play. Mike Ellis went for the absolute kill shot there with a pass over the middle to little use Cleon McClish. Duncan threw a strike. McClish showed how well he runs in the open field all the way down to the three-yard line. Five straight completions by Duncan for 159 yards, Casey. Toss to Johnson. Sweep. Johnson cuts it back in. Touchdown, Fitch Falcons. John Johnston. Johnny J. 27-7 Fitch. Sealing the deal for the Falcons on the road. A second touchdown by John Johnson. He got the first one for the Falcons. He's bookending it tonight, Keith, with possibly their last 27-7 Fitch. Wow, big play. 192 yards passing on the night for Duncan. Caught everybody in the building by surprise. Colton St. Louis in for the extra point for Fitch. And I got to tell you, after two weeks, East Lime has got two scores not representative of how they played. Snap is a little high, but kick is good. Blocked and still, nope, short. Blocked that time by East Lime. 27-7. Fitch on top, 3.55 remaining. Last week, East Lime played a very competitive game. The scoreboard shows that they got beat pretty handily by New London. Right. The scoreboard tomorrow is going to show what looks to be a, a easy victory for Fitch, but obviously this was anything but the sort. Uh, were, I mean, East Lime was bitten by the big plays. I think, the, you know, the biggest play was the, 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 the sack fumble on the halfback option that kind of set the tone and then, you know, Fitch went right down the field and Fitch's speed is really taking over here in the uh, in the third and fourth quarter, Casey. Uh, fresh legs, playmakers on both sides of the ball. Duncan has played an extremely efficient uh, second half and, you know, Fitch, I, good for these kids. They haven't won in a really long time. We see the coaching staff in front of us. The kids are all spirited, but, uh, you know, Fitch has it made some big plays here in the third and fourth quarter. Duncan, the leader for the Falcons on offense with a great game through the air. Also, a very efficient handling of the football in the second half after some trouble in the first half. Scored the second touchdown for the Falcons. In addition, on the other side of the ball, Dante Paul has been an absolute beast. 
on defense for the for the for Fitch. So you're looking at an offensive MVP. It's got to be Robert Duncan sure. though. Though Luke Letelier tonight really set the tone for the Falcons uh, by making key plays from the wide receiver position. And on the other side of the ball, I mean, Dante Paul tonight, I can't say enough about the defense. You know, five catches for over 111 yards for Luke Letelier. Big play after big play. And uh, I'm, I'm just I'm ecstatic for the Fitch kids. I'm, I'm certainly just to see them and, and to see how spirited they are. But, you know, again, I, I'm going to come away from this game here in the last three minutes or so, really impressed with Duncan at quarterback. You know, and, and, and we are, you know, these are South, these are high school kids, and, and we, we want all of them to succeed. We really do. I mean, we have no We're going to see these guys all year round. We are, and we have no favorites here. But you have to appreciate the underdog and the Falcons perhaps breaking that 13-game losing streak. Line drive kick by off the foot of St. Louis, taken by Tyler Valdez. Valdez brings it up past the 30-yard line, and East Lime will take over at their own 30 with 3.42 remaining. You know, regressing a little bit, too, and a big pass play by, by Duncan on a third and long. I think that Coach Ellis is sending a message to his kids that, you know, this is the way it's going to be. You know, we're going to try and win ball games. We're not going to milk it out. We're going to go for the juggler. This is a new style of – this is a new brand of Fitch football. You know, and, and Rudy Bagos has done a really good job at East Line. They're going to win their share of games. They very play, young. They play tough. They play hard. They only have five seniors. They're a very young program, but they grind. They have talent. They have a very promising quarterback in Dylan Hedicek. Uh, they are going to make some noise, but it's kind of nice to see a team like Fitch, who has struggled for so long off of such so many great years, perhaps get their first victory after 13 consecutive losses. Hedicek, straight drop. He's looking for Tryon. Tryon goes up and can't make the catch. He had it in his hands at the 40-yard line. And then Isaiah Sebastian put the shoulder between the shoulders. But I think that's one that Evan Tryon probably should have caught. I think he would probably tell you the same thing. That's the matchup they like, one-on-one on, one on the outside. And Tryon's a very, very gifted athlete out there. Very gifted. Hedicek, who has... Had, you know, had no problems getting the ball downfield to his receivers, put a little too much air under that one and didn't really get it out far enough for Tryon to have a, a chance to, uh, to run the full route. But Tryon did have his hands on Tryon it. Tryon catches that ball in stride. He's probably still going, Casey. Second and 10, 332 remaining in the ball game. Had a check, straight drop, looking for Franco, and threw the hands of Franco at the first down marker at the 44-yard line. And I think Travis Franco wishes he had another crack at that one. A little high with some zip on it, but probably, again, a pass that Travis Franco catches more often than not. But so peeking at the uh, cornerback as the uh, cornerback was closed in on the left side. Was that Paul over there? Think he's looking for Paul? <laughs> Paul's on the defensive end, but I think, I think Franco was looking for the first down marker and looking to make a play. Third and ten. 3.23 remaining here in the ballgame, 27-7. Falcons on top, not representative of what, how close a game this actually was. Head a check, straight drop, over the middle, incomplete. He had his tight end, Sam Hyman, open at the 50-yard line, threw it off his back foot, sailed it high, and with 3.13 remaining in the ballgame, East Lime looking at a 4th and 10 from deep in their own territory. Three straight incompletions here by Hedicek, and uh, two out of the three balls probably should have been caught. That one's probably six inches over too high for Hyman. If it was a little bit lower, he catches it for a first down. But you can see a lot of talent in Dylan Hedicek. He's going to have a bright future at quarterback for East Lime. There's a lot of young kids on this Viking team. They He's are, got an arm, Casey. Yeah, they're going to make some noise moving forward. Travis Franco split right, Evan Tryon split left for East Lime on 4th and 10. Perhaps their last shot of the game. Head a check, drops, pressured, looking down the sideline for Tryon. Incomplete at the 40-yard line, and Tryon couldn't get inside to the ball. Good position by Isaiah Sebastian. Turnover on downs, and with 3 minutes and 4 seconds remaining in the ball game, that might have been the last crack at it we see for the Vikings. Fitch ball at the East Lime, 30 five-yard line. You know, when you talk about this Fitch Falcon program, we talked about in the pregame, from 1999 to 2001, 34 straight wins. And not only in the league, Casey, this is a school, and this is a program that, you know, they went across the state, and they were feared across the state. And then, you know, to go through a cycle, and it has some down years and stuff like that, and, you know, we all know the tradition of Fitch football, and I think the league is better when Fitch is in the mix. I agree. I go back to when it was New London Fitch on Thanksgiving, and those games were a highlight. Duncan hands it off to Parker Gibson. Parker Gibson rumbles for a first down inside the 20 
down to the 19-yard line. First down. Nice run by Parker Gibson right up the middle of what is now a tired East Lyme defense. First and 10, Falcons at the 19. Two minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Clock is running. 27-7 Fitch. Here we're at the end of your Friday Night Football game day live on the day.com from East Lyme High School. Keith O'Brien, the stat guru, the junior voice of game day, all beside me. I'm Casey O'Neill, and we are watching the Fitch Falcons try to run out the clock here. Duncan on the option, keeps it himself, tries to get to the corner, and brought down on the play by Brett Bragaw. And you saw Bragaw go old school Lawrence Taylor there and smack, try to strip the football from Duncan. But nice job, Duncan held on to it. It's going to bring up third and five down at about the 15-yard line. A couple of finals in the league right now. Up the road at Waterford High School, the NFA Wildcats have prevailed 20-13 to over the Waterford Lancers and Wyndham. Came back and beat Griswold 22 to 14. Casey, 37 for Ledger, nothing for Stonington. And then tomorrow's game will be at Bacon featuring New London and Bacon. Pitch goes to Johnny Johnson. He's going to try to stay in bounds, and he does. Ridden down right near the first down marker, but the clock is still going to run. It's going to bring up third and short for the Falcons. There's a flag on the play, so that's going to stop the clock. You know, that might be the last close game that NFA plays for a while. That team is talented enough that they might have gotten their, their bump out of the way early. I would not be surprised to see a, a run of double-digit victories out of the Wildcats. Yeah, I would probably tend to agree with you, and you look forward to a couple of key matchups they have this year. Obviously, the Thanksgiving Day game against New London, but you know they do play Ledger this year, and you and I will be calling that game at Ledger High School, and I'm pretty sure that Coach Budicor will grow that grass knee-high at Ledger at Bill McNall Stadium to try and slow down the fast attack of the Wildcats. You know, it's going to be interesting because it's going to be role reversal. Ledger will absolutely try to take the air out of the football in that game and rely on that defense that has posted those back-to-back yes. shutouts. I am very much looking forward to that game there. Second down and 20 for Fitch. Duncan hands off to Gibson. Gibson breaks a tackle. Gibson's in the clear. Gibson in the middle. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Nice run by Parker Gibson. He has been doing the yeoman's share of grunt work up the middle for the Falcons. We're down to 1 minute and 15 seconds remaining. 27-7 Fitch. And it's third and about six for the Falcons. Close to victory formation time for the Falcons. Would you agree with the grass, though, at Ledger High School on that day? I think, a little over an ankle high. Oh, I think he's going he's gonna to bring in fescue and uh, <laughs> maybe some cactus if he can to try to get that thing as, as rough and tumble as possible. Third and five. Duncan hands it off to Parker Gibson. Gibson down towards the first down marker. Parker Gibson all the way down to the five. First down, Fitch. And we're under a minute remaining, and that should take care of things. You see the Fitch Falcons on their sideline. They are an excited group. Under 40 seconds remaining here at the end of your ballgame. 27 for Fitch, 7 for East Lyme. And the Fitch Falcons are just 30 seconds away from doing something they haven't done in 13 games, and that is win a football game. You know, we talked about the game at halftime being 7-7, seven to seven, Casey. And as Fitch is in their victory formation right now with just 15 ticks left to go in the game, Duncan takes it, puts his knee down, and that would be the last play of the game. Casey, the second half was owned by big plays by the Fitch Falcons, and in my opinion, the speed determined the outcome of this game. And there's the end of your ball game. Clock hits triple zero. Your final score, the Falcons of Fitch High School, 27 the East Lime Vikings, seven. The first time in a long time. Congratulations to Coach Mike Ellis and the Fitch High School Falcons. They are 1-1 one one on the season. East Lime drops to 0-2. You're listening to Game Day on the Day.com. Casey O'Neill along with Keith O'Brien and the Stat Guru. We're going to give you a couple of final thoughts on tonight's game. But we'll be back again next Friday night on Friday Night Football. So you got to join us again next week on Friday Night Football. Stonington High School next week. That's a long way away. That is a long way. You're going to have to drive there. Wyndham at Stonington next week. Wyndham at Stonington. I may have to book a hotel next week in Stonington. But we will be there broadcasting live. Yes, we will. Uh, real quick on this game. You know what? Good for the Fitch kids. East Lime kids can't really hang their hat about anything. You know, they played very, very well. You know, Fitch just made the big plays down the stretch, Casey. It was just uh, 
the speed on the outside, and I come away from this game very, very impressed with Duncan at quarterback. I thought he played a tremendous game. You are messing with the stat guru's numbers. You're trying to get some final stats for us. Casey, any final thoughts on today's game? Yeah, I thought Fitch was uh, – I'd like to see where they go next week. East Lime, two losses, not indicative. The score is not indicative of how well they played. Uh, the loss to New London and the loss here tonight to Fitch, they played a lot better than that. We're going to try to get some final, uh, some final passing numbers for Robert Duncan. Eight of 12 for 195 yards for Robert Duncan. His Started three of six in this game, too, by the way. His main target was Luke Letelier who we know caught over 100 yards tonight. Five catches for 111 yards. Uh, two touchdown runs by Johnny Johnson, one by, by Duncan. And, of course, on the other side of things, a great effort tonight by Dylan Hedicek, who had a, a tough night in the pocket. Yes. Six of 17 for 120 yards. Uh, the Fitch defense really rose to the occasion. Uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, live from East Lime High School, I'm Casey O'Neill. Keith O'Brien, the stat girl. Let's take it out with the junior voice of game day. Hi, everybody. Thank you for watching game day. Um, East Lime Vikings versus the Falcons. Fitch, thank you for watching live on the day.com. There you go. Perfect.